Aha. There we go. Simon told me not to unmute myself, so I had to wait. <laughs> Trying to do with some differences here. Just hope you can hear me. All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Oh, How's everyone doing? Man, it has been a hey, while. Scott, it's been a while. Yes, it has. Boy, life has been insane over here. Um, work and then vacation. And then while I was, I had already broken my toe. And while I was on vacation, I thought I Ouch. broke my thumb. And then we you come kinda... back from vacation and I got sick. And then I had to drive over a thousand miles in one day over this weekend. 22 and a half hours from Oklahoma City to Cleveland. No sleep. Yeah. So you've had Which made time. me even sicker. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you here today because, you know, <sighs> it makes a difference. So, um, yeah, it was let's, better uh, when let's, I was let's, gone. <laughs> let's do, the, let's do the, the introductions quickly and then we'll get going on the stream. Yes. Right. All right. Hey, I get to do this again. Be nice. Be respectful. Be constructive. This is YouTube. Uh, I won't bash Reddit again for a while. Um, don't post anything that's adult, rude, or offensive, of course. Come on, don't advertise or promote your service. We all know you want a job. Um, don't keep spamming the same question over and over again. The way it works is when you have a question and you post it, it goes to the bottom of the list. Even if your question was already in the list, it goes to the bottom of the list. So you lose your place in line every time you nag us with the same question. And then, of course, you know, harassment is not tolerated. We're talking things like bigotry, misogyny, incels, other stupidity. Um, if you get banned from here, we do share ban lists with the Discord and other people. Um, and last but not least, hey, this is supposed to be fun, so have a good time. Indeed, have a good time. Um, who, who are we? That's the next thing, I guess. I think this is yeah. always the, the same. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, so my name is Simon Leifer, uh, Flutter Community Leader and CTO here at Dev Angels London. And you can follow me on Twitter at Dev Angels London. Scott. My name is Scott Stahl. I am also a Flutter Community Leader, organizer GDG Cleveland, uh, owner and founder of Good Dog Apps. And sometimes you can even find me hiding underneath the stairs at Simon's Place, writing a little code over there as well. It's a terrible joke. It's a terrible joke. All right. And we have a, a Randall. Randall, welcome to the stage. There you go. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, so I'm Randall Schwartz. I'm a Google uh, developer expert in Dart and Flutter, one of the first batch of them fought from five years ago. And I just hit my five year um, mark. So that was nice. Um, and that means I spend all day answering questions on Discord, uh, Reddit, Slack, uh, Stack Overflow. Anywhere else that happened to show up occasionally, tweet answers. Sorry, people, tweet, tweet. No, excuse me. What's it called now? X. X doesn't have enough <laughs> bandwidth to really answer questions well. Please do not post questions there. Go to one of the other places, please. And uh, you know what? Why, uh, why don't we just uh, go to Mastodon and say, <laughs> Yeah, as soon as I got a decent Mastodon client that actually works the way I like it to, but so far it hasn't happened. Anyway, so, uh, uh, but I'm for this show, I am the question magician, which means I am watching the live chat and all of you out there that are able to put po questions in. And if you put a Q colon in front of your question, I notice it and I mark it for us to answer. So be sure to do that. And for the very beginning of the show, I'm actually going to go backstage for a little while until uh, the screen sort of clear up a little bit. So uh, I'm just coming in right now to say hello and I'll see you in about an hour. All right. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, Danielle. Danielle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Hi, I'm Danielle Cox. I'm a uh, the, the Flutter tech lead at a company called Ardly. And we're doing stuff mainly on um, we're doing stuff mainly on Flutter Web, which is kind of fun. Uh, my latest things I've been working on are testing, so that's that's also fun. Uh, you know, making those things happen and trying to figure out Chrome driver and all that kind of stuff. And that's what I'm working on. But what I'm probably more proud of is the fact that I am uh, uh, one of the co-organizers of the Flutteristas. And so, if you happen to be female or non-binary, um, or if you're just an ally that wants to help out somehow. Uh, hit me up. My uh, on, on Twitter, I'm not calling it X yet. On Twitter, my, my DMs are open, so you can always hit me up, 
and I'm happy to uh, chat with you about all things Flutteristas at any time. So anyway, that's me. Just in time for uh, Scott to be back. I mean, uh, Simon to be back. Sorry. That's right. I, I think, I'll take Scott. I want to say Scott. Why not? Uh, yeah, and we uh, let's get let's get back to this. And we also have a John. John, welcome to the stage. There you go. Hey, happy to be back in a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Still missing nice. the butter, though. Uh, yeah, no, I've been I've been over by Simon for two weeks, so I, I haven't had time to build it yet. So, yeah, I saw some pictures there. Yeah, yeah, so I've been busy, but uh, yeah, happy to be here. Uh, I am a software architect engineer with Microsoft, doing Flutter on the side whenever I can, and our, for a few of our projects that we've contributed to Flutter. But uh, been here with everybody else for many years. It seems and like even more than it is. And you've also been supporting us great the flood community greatly with with helping out on the medium and pub and editorial on the medium so that's, that's great yeah yeah so i've been handling medium for i don't know the last year or so yeah cool and uh and we have a, a lucas here as well Let's see yes. hey. hello <laughs> wow Talk about getting pulled in last minute. <laughs> yeah, I only sent Lucas the message about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, I just had to run to the toilet first and then run back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you haven't uh, seen me around spamming about Flutter and Friends, then here I am telling you about Flutter and Friends. It's uh, an awesome conference that we're going to have in uh, Stockholm. And it's, it's a little bit different than other conferences because it has a, a lot of focus on like the social activities and the social side mm -hmm. of, uh, of conferences. So the, the first day will be only like social activities, no tech stuff at all. And then, uh, yeah, second day we're gonna have uh, talks and a party in the evening. And third day is gonna be, uh, oh, it says six workshops. There's actually even nine workshops now. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, if you uh, go in and join with the Flutter community code, you'll get 20% uh, off. So join me in Stockholm. It will be amazing, I promise you. Absolutely. So all the, all the stuff that we normally love at a conference is time that we can get to spend with each other and chat. And so basically, instead of making us do that in the 10 minutes between talks, you're going to give us a whole day. Exactly. And you're going to do fun things at the same time. Like you can choose between lots of different activities like uh, VR things. Or if you haven't been to Stockholm before, you can do a little bike tour for Stockholm or canoeing or climbing or uh, yeah, we have lots of things. And also Very Scott cool. is talking at the conference. <laughs> <laughs> I am? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I have to get a talk ready. <laughs> Hi. No. Several weeks left. No, that's um, you, you know, you you, you should you should not learn from Simon when it comes to preparing talks at least. <laughs> I'm the one who do you think taught Simon? <laughs> hey, all right, look, for those who don't get that joke, you are not a real speaker until you're desperately finishing your slides in the Uber on the way to the event. <laughs> then you're a real I speaker. I, I, I didn't believe it. I, I didn't believe this at all until the speakers lounge there at um, WaterCon, <laughs> and, and everybody's like, "Oh, my my talks tomorrow. I'm working on my slides," you know, or yep, or you know, you know things like that. Oh, yeah. I, I was I was astonished. I, yeah. I, say, I always, I always laugh when our event organizers are asking for slides like two weeks before so they can put all the. <laughs> you know, designs and everything in there to make them all look good. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But I'm going to change them all like right up until I go on stage. So go for it. Well, oh yes. So, so, yeah. so we didn't have that. We didn't do that for Flutter and Friends, but we're having another great thing that I think other conferences should do. We have a, like a speakers coach. So they have a, all the speakers mm -hmm. that can sign up for a workshop with a speakers coach. And then you can have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the personal coaching too. Nice. So yeah, like that's, improve. that's really good. Talk. That's a very rare thing because especially too, when you get newer speakers, they're not quite sure what to mm -hmm. do. It's great to have them be able to get some time with somebody a few weeks before the event. Yeah, exactly. And get that kind of coaching. That's great timing yeah. too because it's not so far in advance that they'll forget about it and it's not last second. Mm, exactly. So, yeah, we're we're working on our uh, next iteration of the uh, Floristas conference in November, and it's we, we do the same thing. That that's one of the things I because a lot of our talk our speakers are are relatively new speakers, 
And a lot of them are not native English speakers, which is another thing. And so we definitely um, work hard to make sure that they're able to give a, a quality talk, whoever wants to, basically. And so, so kudos for, for having uh, speaking coaches, because I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing versus, you know, because it's one of those, how do you get experience without having experience? You know, yeah, you don't get experience exactly. unless you mm -hmm. have experience. So finding a way to bring these newer people in, make sure they have a good experience at it. You know, make sure that they have a yeah. good time, that, that, that mm -hmm. it's, they give a good talk, that, that it's productive and they feel good afterward and they want to do it again. And, and that, that's, that's a super thing. So great job, Lucas. Thanks. And one thing I found too at many events, just for everybody, when it's known someone's a new speaker, if you're a new speaker, that's a good thing for you. Get labeled a new speaker because then you can do no wrong. Okay, people are not going to trash you no matter what you do. You can fall off the stage and lose your pants and <laughs> nobody's going to give you a hard time. So but I, I, I want to go on record. I want to go on record recommending that you do not do that. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> OK, yeah, don't lose your pants. <laughs> don't fall off the stage. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's, it's, you know. It's, it's nice that you could do it. it. It's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Oh, man. Um, and right. one, one other quick one, just on a personal note real fast, um, for Stockholm. I'm flying in. I land on the 31st of August. I'm taking the 1st of August as a day around Copenhagen. So if anybody else is in the area and wants to play tourist and then ride the train to Stockholm on the 2nd, let me know. I, I think you missed September, Shoot me a though. DM on uh, Mastodon or, I guess, Twitter. Yeah, that's right. a great idea. Copenhagen is a very nice city, too. I was going to say, is it Copenhagen or Copenhagen? Because, like, Copenhagen. Or does it matter? Yeah, <laughs> the Danish people I've known have said Copenhagen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think I the Danish that. people say Copenhagen when they say, say it in English, but I don't think it matters. <laughs> Everyone understands what it is. What, what, one of, one of my, uh, one of my uh, best friends my last year of high school was uh, a Danish exchange student. And, and I remember he gave me a book that was like, um, it was, uh, Scan you know, we are Scandinavians is what it was called. And, and so for each country, it talked a little bit about the country and then ended with, and we have the most beautiful, you know, the most beautiful women. <laughs> so, so, so it'd be like Denmark and that's how it ended. And they would be like, you know, Sweden and that's how it ended. You know, it's like, so anyway. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Scandinavia at the, at the end of this trip, I will have my Scandinavian bingo card almost completely filled up. I will only need Finland. Nice. So, so what you're saying is someone organized a conference in Finland. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Where's Iro when we need him? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us, Lucas. Mm. Thanks yeah, for yes. having me. Have a yeah, great yeah. one. And uh, hopefully we'll see lots of people at Flutter and Friends. And when the event is over, we should do a show uh, going over how it went. Except yeah, for my talk, good. of course. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Uh, and we've also got, just, just before we get off the announcements here, we've also, after Flutter and Friends, there's also a following event, which is called uh, F3, or Flutter mm -hmm. Firebase Festival. And that's in Prague, in Czech Republic. And uh, you can go to f3.events for the website, and you can find some more information there. Uh, that we'd love to see there as well. That's awesome. And, and in, case, in case any of you, chat. in case any of you need another reason to go, looks like I'm going to be there. Yeah. So, oh, nice. We need to start doing yeah. events in the states. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Majib, Majib, Majib was teasing us on Twitter last week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, He's so, thinking about I, moving Flutter I, Vikings over here. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say things are coming. That's, that's what I say about that. <laughs> and that's and and we did start to organize one for September, and then it was like everybody got overwhelmed with work. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't, you know, we had some planning meetings, but unfortunately, it didn't get to the point where we could, uh, where we could announce. Well, and 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 also, if we did move Flutter Vikings over here, I do want to point out the fact that the Vikings basically ended America long before Columbus ever did. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> absolutely so, of course so my suggestion was to go to the uh, beaches in the south of spain and call it vikings on vacation <laughs> yeah 
Um, there's also, um, for those that know, there's the Droidcon, uh, Droidcon slash Fluttercon, should I say, Vid Talks are out yeah, now. Well. Are out. So you, yep. you can find them. And I'm just posting mine in the chat in case you want to go to see it. There you go. There. <laughs> <laughs> Shame the self plug. There you go. Um, we had, we had, we had we nice some of the questions. Flutterista panel there, too, you should check out. It's not going to be a hard mm, technical sure. talk, but, but you know, I, I brought some of my uh, really good friends there, and, and we had a great panel. Um, also, for those that uh, joined, uh, were here on Hump Day when we did it from the conference, the video quality was pretty low, the audio quality. It's there actually up on the website, and um, I'll be bringing that to the channel uh, once I get the, the full HD video over and we can edit that in. So, uh, uh, yeah, keep subscribe. That's it. That's it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get notified when those things come out. So um, you never know. Uh, a lot of those videos might make their way to this YouTube channel very soon. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, yeah, what are, you, what are you doing? Subscribe. Right. Uh, <laughs> should we get to the questions then? Should we see what we got in the queue? We have questions? Yeah, we have a few. All right. Since Dart Frog 1 came out, have you had a chance to try it? Wait a minute. Is this a shill? No. How is Server Pod compared to Dart Frog? And are they more or less the same? Or are there differences to consider when choosing? That's a good question. I have not um, had time, unfortunately. Um, I've been buried in some database stuff. Neither have I. Um, however, I do know that I, th I believe my the, the concept of Server Pod is uh, more of an ecosystem driven thing. So it's a it has a lot more than just here's a web server. It, you know, here's a web server for serving a website or an API. It's a whole sort of, the idea is to manage a database and do everything like an RM kind of solution. Think, um, I guess, Django admin kind of stuff. But um, uh, it's going to be a, a, a sort of a larger, a complete. It's, it is a different product in, in a sense. Uh, Dartfrog also um, is based off of uh, Shelf, which also means there's some compatible with Shelf stuff. Um, but yeah, no, no, I've not tried it directly yet. So soon, soon, TM. Right. Uh, anything from any of you guys? You not tried it? No. No. Sorry, no. Lucas. Maybe, maybe uh, I'll come back next week. Maybe I have better luck. <laughs> uh, oh, he's got another question. Here we go. Are, Are there, there any, any books you can recommend about good code architecture in general, not dark suspicion? Something like the clean code book. Well, you just recommended the one I had in mind. I uh, picture the one I had in mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, code. there is, um, I, I don't know if I, I think, um, what was the solid principles as well? That, that was one, wasn't it? Um, the, oh. Um, uh, hang on, let me see if I can find is it. it. You're thinking of the design patterns one? Oh no, there is one. one? Can, oh yeah, it's a good point. I mean that that is something. Yeah. So so you've got the Gang of Four book, which is yeah, that's uh, a reference really. If you're going to learn it though, I'd oh. recommend Head Start Design Patterns. That's what I was going to say first. Yeah. yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Which is yeah, probably backwards on me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no fine. you're fine. They yeah. um they talk through the patterns there, whereas the Gang of Four is more a yep. reference book if you already know yep. this stuff. Yep. Yep. I mean, if you're trying to that, learn, you know, then there's data structures, but that's specific. Oh, yeah. Art. That's, oh, that's a, good a nice one. one. You know, another one that's really good. Um, I, 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 I just, you're right back. I, I just started reading uh, Implementing Domain-Driven Design. It's recommended to me, but I'm not hmm. far enough in to tell you if I, you know, it's an older book. Um, it's it's a, what, a 10-year-old book, I'm, I think. I, yeah. I put the titles for these books in the chat. Um so uh, this one you is go. to prepare you for interviews but it goes over all this stuff so that you look good in interviews when you talk about it <laughs> so um what is so the original yeah so it's called software uh software design patterns uh this is the original book the gang of four book i'll put that in there as well um it's got a blue stripe down the side of it white cover with four authors that's what's called the gang of four um it is very much as written uh for a previous generation so you need to take it is really good diagrams really in, <clears throat> sorry really interesting but um yeah it's 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 not aged very well so um just bear that in mind i think the the one that um john was recommending is, is probably a better starting point 
But it's always nice to have a reference material, that's for sure. I've not seen that Coco, the, the Coco um, slash, uh, what was it? Ray Wenderlich uh, book, the, the data structures one. I'm not actually. Um, if I, if I can jump in for a second. <laughs> Yeah. Gang, Gang of Four was a human problem to language deficiencies. And yeah. so the things you were doing in frequently to work around some way that the language didn't have a native way to do it, that's what Gang of Four, that's what the, the Patterns book became. When they took that same book and tried to apply it to Smalltalk, for example, which came out fairly recently, not, not too long after the original Gang of Four book, they said, oh, in, in small talk, this is just do this. You know, you just do this one thing. It's not really a whole structure pattern, stuff like that, because small talk already had that as part of the language by design. So you have to be careful when you look at Gang of Four that it's a solution in a, for, of humanware to implement particular things uh, that uh, were in a deficiency. I think the language was Java. Was it Java they wrote most of their stuff about? Or was it C Sharp by then? No, it couldn't have been C Sharp. But it was one of the early strongly typed languages, and this was the patterns that they devolve or evolved from that to solve some of the common problems for that. And that's why we get the word singleton and stuff because it was hard to do yeah. in uh, in the traditional the language that they were trying to fix. So yeah, that's my take on it. I'm gonna go back and sleep now. That's right. Um, thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna find these uh, just to bring this up on stream here. Uh, let's see. This is another, you just bring this up, it just reminded me of uh, the solid principles. Um, let me see if this comes up okay. Jessica's got a good suggestion too. Yeah. Um, well, Jessica, can wait one second here, hang on. <laughs> Hi. Um, Jessica, smack him the next time you see him, I give you permission. Right. I'm trying to do this, and you're just interrupting me. Right, so yeah, here you go, solid, uh, solid principles. So, mnemonic uh, acronym for single responsibility principle, Open close principle, this this Goff substitution principle, <laughs> interface segregation principle, and dependency inversion principle. These are some of the things that are used in programming, and that spells out solid, which is where it comes from. So, um, I'll post this in the chat, and you can go into each one of these and, and read up about them. There's also um, I found a, like a little bit of a more friendly uh, article rather than Wikipedia, uh, and I'll post this in the chat, and this goes through it in in, in a bit more and explains some of it as well. So, um, yeah, there you go. That was it. What, what was the suggestion? Oh, just, just because uh, suggesting grokking algorithms. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. And all uh, algorithms, every algorithm, understand algorithms. Yeah, but, but anybody, anybody that's using the term grok, I, I have to approve of anyway. So, you know, yeah, right. Um, uh, just learn and absorb. That's, that's what you need to do. Learn and absorb. I think data yeah. structures and the idea of 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 that and and how you efficiently uh, organize those uh, into with algorithms is very important. I think that's kind of a lot of that's kind of covered by that Dart book, the one that uh, yeah. John Scott um, yep. was it data structures with Dart. I put the name in the chat. Uh, hopefully that, that helps. All right, I guess next question, right? Unless anyone's got anything. Yeah. To add. Now that we've buried somebody with enough reading for a year. <laughs> how to make flutter apps secure from various threats or detect jailbreak or tamper detection we talked about that a couple weeks ago didn't we Simon? yeah, yeah it, it seems it, like it, every it, couple of weeks yeah. every couple of weeks the topic comes up it's fine um so the the term is rasp r-a-s-p which is uh was it real-time application security no real runtime application self-protection that's nice yeah. Um, there's actually a package I'll post in the chat here called Free Rasp. Um, Free Rasp is is created by Talsec. There there is other solutions available, but um, this is this is the sort of a go to, and it, it kind of starts you off, and then you'll get some callbacks as to um, uh, where is it somewhere in here? It tells you yeah you get some callbacks saying that you know if your device has been compromised or whatever else, so that can help. Um, I am going to have to uh, disappear for one second. So I guess you guys can talk about that. What's that right. next question? I am just, hang on one quick second, Simon. There is a package or something that does obfuscation makes it easy. Do you remember it? Um, one second. I have to be back.
Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving onward. How, whoops. How do you go about code obfuscation? What is the best way to securely add API keys to your Flutter app code base? For example, Google Maps API key. Uh, well, some of it depends on the key, right? Yeah, and you... because some of that you can you can limit to just your app. Mm -hmm. uh, so even if somebody gets the key, they can't really use it for um, for anything. Right. Otherwise, yeah, there are ways built in, right? We've got um, uh, what's there's a package that helps you set it up. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Shoot, well, <laughs> I'll have to look it up. The, the the Flutter page itself talks a little bit about obfuscation, so I just it does, it. yeah, yeah, and I think it, it mentions the package, yeah. yeah, you know, and and, and once again. Once again, um, you know, one of the first alerts on here, which is very true, is it's poor security practice uh, to store secrets in an app. I mean, you have to assume mm -hmm. that that anything that's in your app could be broken. Right. Um, so that's you know, so so you got to be careful. I mean, it's a little bit of catch twenty two. Yeah, how, how, you know, but that's that, that's one of the things there. So, you know, yeah. So yeah, I'm not doing things like Google Maps API keys. I'm using API keys to identify like which client, for example, something is. And so I, yeah. I treat that as a secret, but it's not it's not top secret. You know, if, if someone, you know, it's just to kind of make life, you know, to make it a little bit harder for someone to try to, to do something nefarious with it. But I mean, yeah. you know, I presume that they could get it if they had to. So, so there's nothing that's, that, that's not complete protection for anything. You know, we, we've no. got other ways of, of doing some sort of, you know, 2FA or, or things like that to actually get what you really need. Yeah. Uh, you know, prove yeah. That. Yeah. Like, like I say, I think the first thing is just making sure that it needs to be protected because in some cases it doesn't, right. um, or it can be, be protected in other ways. Um, like I mentioned with Google maps, I believe there's um, settings in there that you could say it's can only be accessed using that key from a specific app. Um, yeah. So you can go in and, and give it the, um, you know, com dot, whatever, blah, blah, blah package name, package ID, and it checks for that. Um, so in those cases, it really doesn't make sense to worry about it. Just put it in the code and have it there. Yeah. Uh, Things like Firebase, you can set it up so that, you know, the user has to be logged in. Right. Um, <coughs> a court about obfuscation, um, lots of single letter variables, um, no documentation. Uh, <laughs> oh, so just general good code practice, right? Um, yeah, really. Uh, now we know how so, nobody we know call that job security because nobody else can figure the code base out. So there's actually, oh, um, there's actually. Sorry, it's going to briefly mention there is actually a page on this on the dot yeah. on, on the official documentation. Obviously, your dot code. Yeah, and um, it goes. That link where I've been shared. That link where I've been shared. That one, right? Yeah. You know, and Into another thought though is the vast majority of apps, there's no nothing revolutionary. Like you know, if if you're going to go and create an app that is a video player where people can chat about cats, and then there's another one where you are teaching people to do woodworking and you've got videos and you've got some instructions and you've got a chat. It's the same app. Really? I mean, under the hood, the vast majority of apps you're going to run into fall into just a few categories. So unless you're doing something really revolutionary that you need to obfuscate, you know, it, it, nobody's going to gain anything new unless you've got something that's the, particular to your app. So the, the so other thing, I, go on. no, I was going to say the only other thing I really wanted to add is you know go 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 ahead and obfuscate, but but make sure you keep track of your symbols files, so that if you need to look at you know crashes or things like that, yeah. it's very easy to lose track of that. In which case, you know if something so, goes wrong, you've got no way of figuring it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that to be clear, it does actually mention in that uh, in that page that I linked, but uh, we. 
obfuscation essentially changes all your variable names. So that means if a stack trace happens, you get a bunch of garbage come out. It's actually memory addresses that you get out, and they need to be converted back to what they should be, which are the uh, full class names and objects and so on. So you can debug something in production. Um, so uh, both Crash Analytics now supports uploading symbols from Flutter apps, and so does, um, I mean, what's the other one? Sentry. Uh, so both those sort of crash analysis tools both support uh, the symbols. And if you do your builds correctly, or, or not correctly, so, but if you set up like a, a CI kind of environment where I have use code magic or one of these other, you can have that once your build runs through the pipeline, it actually uploads those symbols to crash analytics or to Sentry so that you it just works. So you don't even have to think about your, your stack traces. They just de uh, de themselves automatically, basically. Um, but um, I mean, of obfuscation, as we say, obfuscation is that it's 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 kind of like um, uh, scrambling, right? So it's not actually like encrypted; it's not secure in that sense, right? It just adds a layer of, of challenge to anyone that does want to get into something. Uh, so I think, as you guys said, like API keys are shipped inside your app; they they have to be. You need to secure those API keys on the in the. Uh, if you have a Firebase project, you go to console.cloud.google.com, go to your Firebase project, and under a API credentials, you'll find the bits where you need to secure your keys. And you can secure them just to your signing token, and that's uh, the sorry, signing key. And that signing key should also be the ones in the Play Store if you're doing Android apps. It's the one that ships inside the Play Store called uh, they resign your application, so it needs to match. But all that should be kind of obviously the same ones that you put in Firebase should be in there. Um, what was the, uh, I mean, there's other things you can do. So, um, you can also encrypt data inside of your, you could do code generation and encrypt strings or other private information inside your, uh, Flutter application at runtime. It decrypts it, uh, so things like that can also help with security, but yeah, um, there are certain class of applications where you want to add make it more, more harder to reverse engineer things like banking, fintech, things like that, that yeah. are definitely things that you want to keep secure. Um, but for the most part, yeah. Um, like, and, like and and things, but secure storage is kind of like, yeah, uh, go on. Well, and also, like I was saying, things fall into different categories, but of course there's a category or two where you definitely want to try to obfuscate everything such as Simon said, anything involving currency. But also, once again, obfuscation is not security. Yeah. And they should not be confused because a lot of people do job security. To be honest, another thing to mention here is, you know, if you're releasing let's say a Windows app and you go look into Windows app security and how you secure those, right? Just yeah. because it's Flutter, if you go look at Flutter app security, you're not going to get because you're, you're compiling for a specific platform. So you want to go look up Android app, you know, securing apps and so on. And and for example, this DexGuard, DexGuard's been around as part of. You might have heard of ProGuard, that's the free offering. DexGuard is their paid offering. But um, you can go buy that, and then you put that in your application. And they actually encrypt. They support Flutter and it encrypts the Flutter binary, so that. Um, it's really hard, and each each time you compile, it will encrypt it differently. So it, it's really hard to for someone to like reverse engineer your app. And these are the things that, if you want security, you you pay for that service, right? Um, it's quite difficult to produce something that does that. So that's why you buy it. All right, um, can we talk this to death? Should we move on? <laughs> Moving on. Let us see here. I wish we had advanced debugging <laughs> sessions using dev tools someday. I wish we can have it. So do I. Next. Oh, <laughs> is he saying? I, he what? Yeah. So he, it's he's, not a question. It's a well, it, it yeah. So I said I, I did mention there are some talks from different conferences and stuff out there on you know debugging with the dev tools and and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I think. There's definitely there definitely is like general debug uh, advice about how to use debugger, which is pretty sorely missed for beginners. A lot of beginners end up putting print statements everywhere, and that's great. But when you get into complex, uh, really complex situations, it's really hard for you to kind of yeah. do that, right? So let's we'll see how it goes. Yeah. We lost Danielle. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be back. 
Okay. The wrong button. Here we go again with the We Are Not Googlers announcement. Uh, <laughs> not and a this single not person awesome. here works for Google. We yeah, don't know. This, this either, yeah. Um, we've got the uh, the roadmap. You want to put that up? Simon, that's I guess it's the right thing, right? Yeah. Yep, you got that one, Si? Yeah. Cool. That's, yeah, that's where you look. I, I figured you got that one bookmarked. That, that's uh, um, the official list. Nothing more that we can tell you. Pretty much. So there's actually uh, there's actually a, a official roadmap page uh -huh. on the on the wiki on the site, and this goes into what their roadmap is for this year and what they're looking into doing and working on, and the features that they've been building out. Yeah. So, yeah, you know as much as we do. There he is. Yeah. That is the future updates of Flutter. Well up. Asset transformers, efficient two D scrolling, multiple windows, drag and drop. Wireless debugging on iOS, custom Flutter create templates, support embedding, element embedding on web. I think they actually released that recently, didn't they? Right, and and, and yeah. two D's the next two D two D's the next stable. I'm I'm sure of that. Yeah. Yeah. So. All righty. So we're gonna take these a little bit out of order here for just a moment because a couple of them go together. I haven't seen this one in five minutes. That's because you haven't been here. <laughs> but now, keep in mind, okay, this oh, question geez. is exactly why we have this. <laughs> um, so, so, so how many different state <laughs> management packages can come out <laughs> and how quickly, right? How, All right. How, so, I, I was gonna well, say, that, oh, God, is this another one? Yeah, that's they're related. This is the actual so, question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And well, not well. Somebody else. Well, there were a few of them. Too. And yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. answer to the quote unquote so-called best is, it's got two factors. One, what are the needs of your app? Mm -hmm. Number two, what are you familiar with so that you can get the product out the door on time? Yep. Okay. Yeah. If trying to learn a whole new system is going to cause you to blow a deadline and there's something else you can use that won't, the second one's probably your best bet. Yeah. You can probably do whatever you need to do with any of the state management packages. It's just yeah. going to be different. Well, any, oh. uh, anything that is specifically designed to be a state management package and right. not designed right. to be yeah. 20 gazillion different things. Uh, yes, uh, yes. All these, all these people have missed out on, on the Flutter dev camp that we just started about state management. So, yes. Sorry, we've already done subscriptions for that. Um, however, I will mention that the the what we've been working on, which we'll be con continuing to, to code on a bit today, is a shopping application. And um, that's the source code. And that uses no state management library. There you go. So you can go see how you do it with just Flutter. Well, it doesn't need your need. Most right? people would use Riverpod. For whatever they're doing, that's usually a good go-to. Um, if you are more partial to the Redux or Block approach, uh, there's a great one out there by Felix, you know, Flutter Block. And it's usually either RiverPod Flutter Block or you can do it the way Simon likes to do it. And I do it sometimes, which is just change notifiers, value notifiers, mm -hmm. sometimes using uh, Ancestor State of Type and Inherited Widget. Which is all those packages are doing under yeah. the hood anyway. Yeah. They're just yeah. trying to make it easy for you. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty much that one. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. I, yeah, and and once again, you don't have you know you can use change notifiers, etc. Without you, it doesn't need to be inherited widgets. It can it can be. I mean, like we probably would tell you that anyway. But you know, it, it's I I would say don't go grab a big state management pack is just out of state management package. You know, take a look at what you really need. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's really what I would start with. Yeah. And I guess where I was going before was if you've learned one, it can probably yeah. do what you're trying to do in a different app. So why try and learn something new for state management, mm -hmm. right? So get familiar with one and then, you know, if you want to tackle another one, tackle another one. Interesting side point. Uh, I was talking with Chris Sells about it the other day, or not the other day, I'm sorry, the other year. And, uh, <laughs> we, 
we were saying I, I brought up a point. I was like, Chris, state management is how you manage changes to your objects, right? You're changing the state of the objects. What we all refer to as state management is actually change propagation which means notifying the rest of your app that something has changed, right? So managing the state, I guess you could think of it as managing the state of the app, but really state management is managing the state of things and then getting word out to your UI in order to update it is more propagation. So I said, Chris, why do we call it state management then? And Chris says, well, we've always called it state management. So, you know, <laughs> changing it now would just confuse people. I so, just um, stumbled across this pair of classes that by themselves can make your entire state management, which is value notifier yeah. and value listenable builder. Between the two of those, your value notifier can go anywhere in global space. You don't have to talk to context to find it. And the value listenable builder will build everything below it in the tree when that value changes. It's so mm -hmm straightforward yep. doesn't involve context doesn't involve method this though context none of that just here's a value notifier um, here's a value listable builder and you're done funny uh, you dropped you dropped out the scott see him why not um all right here, so. can you hear me now yeah. yes better. yeah okay well let me uh, share the screen here for just a quick second. Let's just say that, you know, it would be nice um, if someone somewhere were to do a video on, you know, value notifier, which this is called value notifier simplified uh, as part of a series I had started called explain it to me like I'm five. So, yeah, this has been around, when did I post this? Yes. I don't even know. Um, and for whatever it's worth, I think Scott, it's so I old that YouTube know. wasn't doing dates. Uh, it's at least three years old. Scott, Scott, I, I do hear people every now and then ask when you're doing the next one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, that's, you know, I, I was thinking about maybe doing one on the flex and the six part algorithm. But I'm going to wait until I finish that talk, because uh, that is my talk for Stockholm. So for those that are interested in state management, there is actually a whole section on the official documentation around it and what it is, how it works, how to think about state management and also ephemeral state versus app state, which are kind of mm -hmm. intrinsic topics here. So I recommend go read that. It's quite a good little read to get you started yeah. if, you're not, if you're not sure what we're talking about. Or want to learn more. Anyway, let's move on because state management is is I'm, I'm done with state yeah. management. Hey, there it is again. I didn't put it back up. No, you didn't hide it from before. Now I did. Right. All right. So, where are we? Um, we are taking the dog out. That's where we're at here. Right, the question: How to? Are you driving or am I? How to implement focus rings? I said, uh, what's focus rings? Uh, that was like, my question. Focus rings? I mean, Google. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Rado, do you know what they are? No idea. I just pushed the button to say that's a question for the team, not for me. Ha ha ha. No, I don't. I don't know. I'd be Googling <laughs> it right now. It's really the thing I would I am Or I'd ask, right I'd ask Bard. I'd ask Bart or I'd ask Bing Chat or something. You know, somebody's going <laughs> to um, know. I mean, yeah. So focus rings to me is about mouse focus. Uh, sorry, Scott. Somebody's making thing. noise. There you go. Me yeah. and Scott, sorry. Um, yeah, focus rings were like that kind of like, uh, uh, where's my mouse? And it shows you the rings around your mouse, right? That was what I thought focus rings were when I first heard it. Oh, yeah. I was doing my camera, so I was way off. Found I, it. I can only think that it's the tab order for focus when you're going through a form. No. Stand by to stand by. Oh, well, see, that's my random guess. Just how useful I am. It has to do with material three, apparently. Oh. oh. Ta da. Some, des some designer. Oh, no. Decided this is, this is actually, you should take it. Cool. Yep. 
Yeah, uh, but this is this is three focus yeah. rings and keyboard. Yeah, this is fine. So. In fact, don't we already don't you already get that a lot of the time? This is a placeholder issue for a project to draw outline indicators or focus rings around focused M3 elements. These improve uh, A11Y sure. and ease of use. So the answer to this question is somebody's trying to work on it, and apparently <laughs> it doesn't exist yet. Well, I mean, you were asking how, how to implement it themselves. And the answer is just wrap your widget in a – you could literally make a little widget called focus ring. Maybe we should do it in the – maybe we should start live going in there because that's a super simple thing to do. Make a widget that has a focus node, right? And then it um, – yeah. You have to track. You have to track which which one you're on, and uh, yeah, also, move between them. I mean, it's, it's, uh, sorry, I'm getting, like, there's quite a lot of noise coming from someone's microphone. I no, think it's yeah. Danielle. Did Danielle did no, your mic change? No, no, it's mine. My wife John's. was doing some copying, and now the printer decided to clean oh. itself. No ah. worries, no worries. It was. I was going to say the. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the, yeah, no, the focus rings. You can just put uh, a make a state for widget that has a child widget, pass that on, wrap mm -hmm. it in a focus and a, and a box decoration. When it has mm -hmm. focus, box decoration shows with your border. When it doesn't have focus, it returns null, it doesn't draw a box decoration. Mm -hmm. Done. We, we uh, well, you, okay, you, you definitely want to make sure that it has the, the same size. Otherwise, the, you're, you'll, you'll move around as you, as you gain focus and then you don't focus. So it's not quite that simple. Well, box um, decoration doesn't doesn't emit any size. That's right. It just draws. So yeah, so that'd be fine. And then and then uh, in my app, not only do we have this for focus, we also have it for hover. So you know, since we're on web, mm -hmm. if you hover, we also have a, a state that does this, and it's a, so so it's implemented there at the same case. Except I'm now looking not just at I, I, I'm keeping track of whether my my mouse is over it or not, and also focus. And so you know, mm -hmm. it's an or instead of just a single thing. Cool. And if you look at that example, the example that we had up on the screen there, you'll see that's an example of where something's wrong because, in my opinion, because the uh, the part that they're hovering over has got much more rounded than the um, than what the uh, the actual ring has. Yeah. So so I would I would say that's not a great example for that part. I, I would want probably my ring to have the same the same kind of shape as the. There's the underlying thing just so that you're not seeing the background as part of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Okay. Go. Sounds good. Let's see here. Next. Where should I add logs in the code? What is the best practice? <laughs> Wherever you need to know something. Yeah. So so to be clear, I think a lot of so so the way it normally works in terms of logging is you've got print statements, right? They just print out some text, but it's not very handy just to print some text. You normally want to know when did it occur, especially if you try to debug things in series, because log statements don't also can get interrupted. They don't also have to come out in the same order. So having a date timestamp can also really help. Um, I'm glad you said having, you meant print statements can come out in the wrong order, or because uh, you yeah, said logs. Like, yeah, logs, print statements, the same difference. Um, I'm just saying that print statements output logs. Right. Anyway, uh, so inside the actual log that you're outputting, you want to you want to include the date timestamp uh, for sure, and then probably a log level. And the idea about log level is if you're trying to debug something and you want to go, is this more? Uh, uh, I need to know all the exact things of when something happened within your code. Then you can turn on high, you know, like trace verbose. Debug level, you have info level, warning level, errors, so on and so forth. And that lets you kind of delve into the detail when you're, if you have to have logs for debugging. Normally, if I build a mobile, if I'm building a mobile app, um, I'll have a uh, some sort of logging class that I can call. Whether I get that from from some sort of scoped thing inside the the hierarchy or uh, just it's some sort of global, it depends. But the the general principle is. Um, at right in debugging, I'm outputting logs based on whatever log level, like global log level, I want. And then, if the uh, when it's in production, those logs actually get recorded in the application in a, in a rolling buffer. So you have maybe record the last 200 log statements. And if a crash happens, you can submit those log lines along with the crash, so that you have an indication of what the user was doing before the crash occurred. 
and that can also help you diagnose whatever the issue is from a production standpoint. So there you go. Now you know. Yeah, the, I, I, I posted the package that we use in our app, um, the PubDef package. I, I posted that. And, um, you know, once again, you, you can set that up to be as simple as a print statement, or you could have it log it to a server somewhere. You can you can have it set up based upon whether you're dev or release. I mean, there's, you know, basically you, you want to set it up so that it logs what you need. Since we're dealing with personally identifiable information, for example, I need to make sure that for our release versions, I'm not logging anything that can't be output. But for testing purposes, I want to be able to do that. Um, so, so you know, you, you've got to, the best practice is to put some thought into it and, and, and do what you need to do. To make it have, you know, to make it have exactly what you need when you need it, but not, not too much. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I think think. I mean, it's also there's tons of logging packages. So there's logger logging. There's an official log package. Um, also, Dart colon developer, the official Dart package actually has a log function, which actually does like the in depth logging. Um, that can also be helpful. Yeah, there's lots of options. Um, John, uh, yeah. you, did you, you have to head off, do you? Yes, I do. I unfortunately have uh, some internal meetings I need to go attend. So uh, I have to jump funds, off. Of yeah. funds of working. <laughs> yeah, I got to go do some work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got one more question in me right now. I went and fetched oh. something on this. Cool. But, uh, All right. Well, I will see you guys. You have to Thanks, do John. work. And, uh, yep. we'll see Catch you, you later, time. John. See you later. All right. All right, and my last question, is there any performance benefit to creating smaller widgets instead of returning them from helper methods? Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. decoding Flutter, stream, uh, you know, uh, widgets versus helper methods. <laughs> that yeah. is exactly what this is. Uh, it is part of decoding Flutter from the Flutter team, and Craig does a wonderful job of laying all that out for you there. So he has explained it to you, so we don't have to. Um, in short, in, I will briefly mention in short that the, the framework has more knowledge about what you're trying to do and therefore can cache the widgets better. Um, so basically, always use widgets, don't use helper functions. That, that's the way, that, that's the TLDR of that, right? Um, yeah, there you go. Um, but, yep, there's the video for that. And uh, with that, I am going to go back to the salt mines. And because uh, I have dog food to pay for. Grab the pickaxe. Uh, Start chipping away. Yeah. Good seeing you, Scott. All righty. Great yeah. seeing you again, folks. And I will be back again soon. Ciao. All right, Scott. Good to see you again. And then there was three. Um, I yeah. will mention that. that that uh, the, the, the Dart developer libraries is kind of an unknown for some people. And it's worth having a look through some of the functionality that's in here. Uh, the top level function I was talking about is this log state log function here, which emits a log event. And in here, you can actually give it a timestamp sequence number, a log level, and things like that. So that can also help. Um, there is also uh, this register extension and post event and some other things that actually, this is actually Ooh, how. Um, I've seen that before. This is actually um, how the debugger, uh, sorry, your your inspector uh, registers like the handlers for like the buttons. So you can actually invent your own and actually have your own like helpers inside your app. So this is kind of cool. Um, the other one I want to mention is this one. Um, so uh, this is actually quite an important function if you need to attach to a running application. So I'll give an example. Uh, you're running an application, you need to background your application needs to wake up when a push notification is received, and then your crash happens, right? So in a sense, you can't debug that. You can't just run it because now your app's not running. It's not doing the same thing coming from background. So what you do is you put this statement in, and you say it's to true to stop when, when the breakpoint is hit. That's the statement after this following this one. And what will happen is you have it wake up from the background from your push. You put this in that bit of code. And then it will pause, the application will pause. And then you go into your IDE and go attached to an active process or attached to process or whatever it is. And you can just choose your app. And then 
boom, you're attached straight after the fact, and you can start stepping over your code line by line and work out what's going on. Uh, so in very in, in asynchronous situations when you need to, the debugger function is very important uh, and worth uh, thinking about. Yeah, anyway, that's that's cool. I did not know about this. So yeah, it's it's basically the attach. There's a flutter attach command, and that allows you to attach to one that's all that's waiting for you, basically. And you can also do that with um, you can detach from your existing application. You know, it stays running in debug mode, and then you can actually uh, have a statement like that, and or you can just attach at any point. So you kind of get the option of both. Okay, I guess next question. Um, Oh yes, thanks, Steph. Uh, <laughs> it, it's not going anywhere yet. I'll keep I'll keep, I'll keep you posted. All right, next. Uh, will you upload the videos from the workshop here in channel? Uh, thanks, Jessica. Um, don't know yet. Uh, uh, we'll keep you posted. Um, there is some of the building, and we're going to work on some more hopefully in just a minute. I think we've reached kind of reached an hour now, so I think we should start. Get your last questions in, and we'll start wrapping up, and we'll do some live coding. So what five more? Should we say Randall? Five more minutes? Ten more minutes? Yeah, we have I have five more now. So give me five. Well, I'll give you five more minutes to rush in and type in one more because it's yeah. probably about the time limit that we want to spend. Yep. All right. Next. Um, I, I, next actually, I, I'm going to have to go. Um, oh. Okay. All right. I, I I just got the message right. that they, they end up scheduling a release for for Wednesday at this I, time. I, I was going to say. So I'm point I, I cannot delay any longer. I'm sorry. I have to run. No worries, no worries. Okay, see you, see you next week. How, week. how many hours? How many hours, Randall? 166 from now. I'll see you all there in 166 hours. Yep. <laughs> see you there. Actually, oh, 167. Well, anyway, should uh, be an hour late now. <laughs> <laughs> should be should be early. Should be early by an hour. <laughs> right. I forgot uh, we're only halfway through the show, or we're the first third of the way through the show, depending on how long you talk. <laughs> Do you, do you want to take the questions, Randall? And then, uh... Sure. So, uh, Paul Orion, Orion Paul, wow, asks uh, also, also, uh oh, there's probably a first part to this. And uh, how long uh, I've been long been searching? How can I implement a hold to record feature in Flutter, like the one in WhatsApp, Instagram, chat room? I know none of those, but I presume I you're talking about long press is triggering something, and then it, as soon as the long press ends. That that triggers to stop it. Uh, that's pretty straightforward, right? Simon? It's not a long press, as far as I remember. Um, but what you're looking for mm. is gesture detector. So yeah. in gesture detector, you actually have a on tap up and on uh, tap down. It says on tap down, ah. on tap up. So you do on tap down, you start your recording, and on tap up, you stop your recording. And it's that simple. You wrap your whatever button you want, which is just a piece of material with a background color or something. Um, yeah. In with that and away you go and when it comes to uh when it comes to recording packages you know uh again audio is not something that flutter does so you go onto pub and say i know sound recording i know something like that flutter sound sound recording um you know you you you, you pop in whatever you want and then you know you have a record button and they've probably got like a nice i have no idea i'm not particularly looking at any one of these you know recorder Flutter sound recorder, follow me nose. Yeah, start recorder, pause recorder, resume, stop recorder. That sounds helpful. Yeah. Great one. Oh, look, log level. There you go. So you can debug it if you want to. Is recording, is stopped, progress, recorder state. Uh, so that sounds pretty straightforward. Um, sounds like fun, actually. Maybe we'll have to try one of those. Secretly yeah. record myself while I'm doing karaoke or something. Well, that wouldn't be secret because yeah. I wouldn't know that. So you say to start recording to file. Ah, ah, Craig, Craig's got a thing in here. Hold on. Stream. Hold up. So worth noting that on tap down yeah. can fire when the user is actually doing other things like double tapping, dragging, whatever. So on tap only fires when the other gestures have been ruled out. That's important. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Craig. There's um. There's uh, the in Android in, in the Android world it's called touch slop uh, as well. So it basically you press down and when you start moving, it then knows you're dragging in one direction. So it does an on drag horizontal, on drag vertical. Uh, uh, but there can be some initial movement basically. Um, uh, oh. There are ways to you can you can also mitigate that with like a, a timer as well. So they tap down and then you you dispatch a uh, there's a timeout 
forgot what it is now. You can go have a look at the double tap timeout, and then you can yeah. say, oh, start recording after that time's elapsed if it's not been cancelled before. There's also uh, on Jesse Tetra on, you should actually always handle on cancel. Let me go back here just to show you. There's, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, on tap cancel. On tap cancel. On pan cancel. On tap cancel. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, and there you go. So uh, previously triggered on tap down will not end up causing a tap. What? What? Uh, so this is again. You got the tap down. And then they realised that oh they did vertical drag. That way you're getting on tap cancel after that to tell you oh it wasn't a down event you need to pay attention to. And they can stop recording and discard the recording, right? Um, so that's also how you can handle that as well. The easiest way that's is great. to get uh, there are apps that actually sort of show everything, and then you can just do them and see what it actually triggered as, or just write a lot of test code, write a lot of proof of concepts. Cool sure. Wait, Craig, where are you? You should join us. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah, I think yeah, you know about, you know about how this works. You people get on screens and then you talk for a while. That's a, uh, yeah, sure you know I don't know. He's never done that. That's, that's, that's risky. That is. Um, we got plenty of room. We got two more slots down here. Down here, two more slots. Plenty <laughs> room. Plenty room for Craig. All right, next one. Oh, I guess I should right. be finding this, huh? Uh, or you got that. I got it here. Hooks. I actually already answered this in the chat, but I'll explain it again here. So uh, uh, this person's talking about Flutter Hooks, which is one of the many packages that have come from the Remy, Remyverse, <laughs> one of the Remy <laughs> Universe uh, packages. Uh, Flutter Hooks are not part of Riverpod. They're sometimes used together, but they're not part of Riverpod. They're a totally different strategy. It's about taking the life cycles of a stateful widget, like an its well, declaration and its state, build and dispose, and building vertical integrations of those. So for example, a, um, a text controller needs to be uh, declared at the top uh, initialized in an init state, used in build, and then disposed of. So there's four things there, and you've got to get those is all it, coordinated every time. The hooks it, take that it. vertically in one action. Here's so, an example. So you, you, you've got like an animation it's control, you construct it, you have to it's deal cool. with it, restyling it when you, you know, hot reload or whatever, yeah. um, right. dispose of it and so on. And then instead of doing that, you now do this one line, use animation controller, but you have to so, extend it to widget. And so my view you, is they're, they're, they're not to replace stateful widgets, although often when you use them, you end up not needing as many stateful widgets. It's just a, if you have a need for vertical integration where you have something that would have crossed two or three or four of those lifecycle states, then it can simplify it by placing an abstraction and letting you do that in one operation instead of doing it in four separate places. So that's kind of nice. But if you I, just have a value you want to hold in state, just put it in state. Don't worry about trying to use uh, hooks to get away from that. I, I also find myself, if I needed to do something like this, uh, I don't find myself using hooks. I find myself just making a, a widget that wraps around that, that takes, uh, abstracts out the specifics, and then you've got the same behavior. Um, I yeah. find that works just as well. But yeah. Cool. Um, anyway. All right. So oh. let's, uh, let's go to the next one here. Uh, where's the next one? Right there. Um, I heard someone say that debug print can skip output if the log is flooded and they rationalized using a simple print instead. Is this true no, or not? And hey, what happens if print is in release code? Ooh, you don't want to do that. So, so you don't put print in release code because it's still going to print. That's one thing. <laughs> oh, oh, well, but to nowhere, but to nowhere, right? Um, it, no, it does print. No, it does print out. It does print out to the, to the uh, in Android, for example, print out to the, um the global log this system log and then inside of ios you get printed out to the also to the debug log stuff for the application um yeah you don't want to do that now there is a you can use zones at the top level to overwrite print and what happens when the print takes place it will find it from the zone and then it'll skip you can tell it to skip in debug mode you can do that but that's basically what debug print does now the problem with doing it at that way with a zone or hell you could just have a function called log and then in, in the if statement inside that and say oh if debug then print uh, otherwise don't right um the problem here is you've still got now all the strings that you would have called that initial function with 
uh, are all still kept in the code. So if you've got maybe really revealing information about what function does or how it works, that can help with reverse engineering or, or other things within your application. Um, so a lot of the time, the reason why debug print is used is because if the function resolves to not doing anything, which means it gets uh, tree shaken out, so you don't even include the print statements. Uh, so that's where that comes in. Um, the um, the debug the debug uh, print actually is also um, the thing you're talking about is uh, it can skip output if the log is flooded. It doesn't skip output ever. It just throttles the output, so it just slow down the output. So that's all that does. Um, I've never, yeah, if you ask for something to print, it's going to print. It just may not print as fast. And that's for a good purpose because, again, you don't want to flood your logs. Um, but, again, you know, that also comes to have logging instead. Don't just do debug print. Use logging, and then you have better control over when to log, how to log, all that kind of stuff. And the same goes, you can still have a top-level function call like debug print, and then in your uh, do like a... Um, conditional import uh so when you're in debug mode it, it includes it includes it when you're in release mode it doesn't and it's just an empty function Ta-da! you've now you know, skipped the need to have that function and get tree shaken out so there are ways of doing that um oh and craig has a follow-up here let's see where it is that right there um throttling does sound like skipping if there's doesn't end up being a quiet time to catch up mm. Uh, interesting. Um, as, far, as far as I know, it doesn't actually skip anything. It just slows down the printing task. Uh, it does mean that they get they can get printed out of order, though. Um, I am kind of curious. I will I will check that. But as far as I know, it will always print. Um, okay. Now, on to the next one. Let's keep going so we can get your uh, live coding in soon. So is there any chance that Dart could become the default language in Android development? Well, there's always a chance of everything in the world, in the universe. So... I don't know that if that's what, along what scale you mean. Uh, I would guess probably not. I think, I think it, or it, I mean, you know, eventually maybe, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think so, but I doubt it. Um, it for, for entire, like it took a long, it took a long time for people to go from Java to Kotlin and they're very similar in terms of they're both JVM languages, like, not a new, lot right. of new concepts to learn. So I doubt it, but you know, if you have, uh, if the platform suddenly goes, okay, we're only going to do Dart, then yeah, of course, everyone's going to have to move, right? That, that's how it goes. It's like Apple doing its thing. Um, and then also the same goes with things like um, other operating systems that potentially may come out in the future <laughs> or not. Um, they may use, decide to use Dart as like a primary language, in which case um, maybe that's a different, it's not answering your question. Yeah. You, well, you here's, here's a, an alternate take on that if Fuchsia ever starts going again uh because now it's sort of like it seems to be sliding away now from everything i'm reading recently so it, that could be not a real good strong starter but fuchsia would have made it interesting to have dart basically as your core uh, and flutter as your core sdk for uh mobile and other apps so um uh, yeah, but w the the future of Fuchsia is in question now, and uh, with all the available information we have that we can tell you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. Ah, sorry. Continuing. You got it. Okay. Uh, is there any chance? Oh no, that we did that already. Yeah. Um, we, we oh, so I should I should hit the star and and that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to set up a custom package using Flutter Create Template Package. Uh, it's populating system specific codes as well. iOS, Android, Windows says the fix yeah. is already there. You can say platforms equal on the list of platforms. I think it's platforms, right? Yeah, I mean platforms package equal. itself shouldn't be doing that. It's that's plugin. I think I saw this myself and I was very confused. Okay. Um, I, I guess I saw it says the fix is already there. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but yeah. and I guess there's already a bug fix, in which case great, if that's what you mean. Cool. Um in which case yeah, is can, master or maybe even beta because beta you can do dash as, as Randall said you can do dash dash platforms and specify yeah. don't specify any won't make any specific platform specific code i don't right. remember last time i used but i did notice this myself um hopefully it's been raised as an issue hopefully it gets fixed cool. yeah. 
All right, let's call that one done. Uh, let's see here. Can you showcase that debug function from Dart Developer in live coding? Oh, it's just a hint that maybe you can show off how that actually works in sure. coming up in a few minutes. Yeah, cool. Easy enough. Uh, and next thing here, show. Okay. Is there some package to embed the desktop screen to show it in your Flutter app? Like Chrome, where when you want to share your screen. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Is there a package to embed the desktop screen to show it in your Flutter app, like Chrome does when you want to share the screen? Oh, you mean so you, so you can see like a little preview of the screen? Is that what they're trying to get? Um, I, I, I guess that's what you were, you're suggesting. Uh, so there is actually. Um, so, I mean, in general, it's, it's the same as what you would do for any desktop, desktop recording. And I think you need to look at like native, like look at the native platform, say, how do I do desktop recording on that platform? Flutter can display it. There's no problem with that. So <clears throat> whether it's a, an image or if it's a video, essentially, or, or a series of images, aka video. Um, so for example, I can tell you on Windows, uh, it has APIs. In fact, you can use the Win32 package that's in Flutter to do this. So, um, uh, there's a package called Win32 made by Tim Sneath. Um, I'll bring this up on the stream here briefly. Um, this is the package here. And there's some APIs uh, in Windows, which are um, oops, hold on. Uh, documentation, uh, which you'll find in the documentation. Oh, this is the, does this have a search box? It doesn't have a search box. Tim, what have you done? Um, hang on it. There's a way around this. I know there is. If I go sneaky, sneaky, and do that, and then change it to Win32, I get the generated docs. Do I? Do I not? Oh, okay. Hang on. I'm going to try this again. Let's try this different way. Uh, you can direct your docs to any oh. website you want, by the way. Um, if I go versions, I should be able to pick. Oh, look, docs didn't generate the latest version. That's why. Right. So, yeah, they didn't generate the latest version. So, if I click on this, how do I get to docs? Oh, that's a good point. Here's a comment too. Don't forget to grant permissions for screen recording. Yeah. Um, bear with me one second. Just going brain dead. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm just trying to find something. Okay. Oh, okay. So they only keep the API docs for the latest version and they're not being generated for the latest version of Winter. So that's wonderful. <laughs> I don't know why it's got the X on it, but it says 404. So that's not great. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, like, no. 404 is never good. So who knows what's going on there? But yep. the uh, official link here to the official docs, hopefully, uh, Winter 2 functions. Does he have a list? See, this is great docs, but I want the reference, and <laughs> I can't get the reference. Yeah. Down, down, down. Okay, anyway, well, tough luck. Um, uh, you'd think I would, I mean, I get it, but also, I want, I want the official. See, of all the times of John to sneak away during the second half. Right. Anyway. Yep. He could have answered so, um, this. I'm sure he could have. API reference. This 404. Okay. Some yeah. example. I'm, I'm going to post this to uh, initiative. No, look, I, I, do know that <laughs> I do know there's a part of the Google team watching that who would know what to do with this. So, yeah, so I'm sure know. I'm sure somebody's the name like Mring might know <laughs> yeah, who to yeah. talk to. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so so there's an API called uh, get, get DC, which is get device context. Uh, on I briefly just give you a little, little thing about and this is on Windows like Windows specific. What was the I can't remember what the question was now. Um, yeah, uh, screen recording, being able to embed a screen. That was it. Uh, how, there it is. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, so basically you need to capture the screen and then represent it in Flutter. Uh, so in um, in the native uh, Windows world, you can get the DC of null, which basically means the desktop. Uh, there is actually a desktop underscore HWND, which is like a placeholder for, for it, which is still null. 
and uh, basically means capture the device context of the entire screen, the primary monitor, and then you can you can also do capture a window or capture a um, a uh, a different monitor and things like that. There's, there's, so, so you go look up the Windows APIs for this, anyway, and then you do uh, get essentially get di. Oh, oh, hang on it. Oh look, look what oh, we got. That's the best one to put on. Best one to put on. Hang, hang, hang on, I don't know I how to. Just... I can't bring it up. Oh, there you go. That like that. I did that. How did you do that? I just clicked on it. It was. In oh, the, okay. Oh, it's, it's in the starred list. That's why. That, that, so those that don't know, we we managed to enable the Google things. So money. We can make, we can we can actually pay for the Humpty Hump dollars we have to spend on yeah. this thing every we to, week. We yeah. Pay for this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Rebar. Thanks. And you're most welcome. Yeah. You don't need to thank me by paying, but that will go towards the running of the community. So thank you very much. Yes. Um, uh, oh, look, Craig's a city. He needs to go to a meeting place. When is yeah. it I'm moving open now, so I'd love to properly join again soon. Yes, you're welcome Standing to come. Standing invite. Just show up. We'll we'll put you on. That's okay. Just yeah, anytime okay. you want to come in, it's fine. You're good. We'll make that happen. Uh, Let's so, go back up to the list of questions anyway, here. I so, 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 sorry, hey, briefly oh, back to this right. point. You, yeah, you capture the oh. screen, and then there's a get get, get uh, there's a get bitmap from device context. You get bitmap, and then in Flutter, there's a function called decode image from from pixels, and that gives you back uh, an image that you can display inside Flutter. There you go. Oh, cool. right. Cool. All right. Next. Yeah. Next. Okay. How do we refresh the GWT auth token via refresh token mechanism in DO? Apart from queued interceptor, I want to handle the on error part as well as any heads up for this. I'm not familiar too much with DO. Hopefully you are. Um, I know what he's talking about. The interceptor is the, 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 the framework that, so the, here's the problem you've got. Uh, Taran, what's that Taran? Taran G, sorry. Uh, the problem you've got here is that you use Do. Do has a way of doing things, right? So you have to do them the Do way and use the interceptor and so on. If you if you want to do it yourself, then don't use Do. That's the that's the kind of like you know, you basically Do is an opinionated HTTP library, right? You do it the Do way, right? And that's the same with any like the libraries that add on top of the underlying packages. There's a great package called HTTP which does everything that Do can do, but just differently, right? And then Dio is built on top of that. So, so anyway, my point being here is, um, I don't know exactly uh, the way I've done it with Dio before was using an interceptor, so not much help. I'm sorry, but uh, to be honest, I would probably not use Dio. <laughs> so, there we go. Yeah, fair cop. Fair cop. Is there any? Okay. Uh, sorry, he's, he's, he's followed up with that. Sorry, uh, I, he or she. Sorry, uh, has followed up with that. With is there any other library you recommend? Yeah, HTTP. There you go. Yeah. Uh, just use the straight stuff. So, uh, so, so there's to be clear. To be clear on this point, let me bring this up on the stream here. Uh, you have the HTTP library from dot dot dev, and this is the sort of official one. You can do HTTP post, HTTP get, some other things. And and you know, if you want to just make a function, you can. So if you want to like make a nice function that takes like a model object and does two JSON, you can just make a function that does the. You know that does the thing you want the request that you want i mean it's not too difficult but yeah you got uh there's a retry package you can use automatic retrying um you can see like user agent like wrapping a base thing to inject headers you can do all that with with the standard library so that's fine there's also um to be clear in the dart io um dart io package you'll find that there's a http client built in in, in, in the dart io um that the, this client is actually the one that is underlying the HTTP package. So there's another layer deeper, but this is very raw. This is very, very raw. It's not, it's not, you know, you have to start your request, set your stuff up, close the request, send the data, transform the response. I mean, you know, this is all very, this is basically what happens for you with the HTTP library. So I say use that, but there may be things that you want to do that, require you to go one level deeper and in which case you want to go look at the HTTP library or even you might want to um uh start a HTTP server or something like that and that's what you can do with that so okay yep cool um so continue right. on I guess yeah. okay uh yeah 
Yeah, the, mm -hmm. any exciting new open source, Flutter open source application that you really like? All of them. Thank God you guys are out there doing open source. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I could shamelessly plug my own. So I've been working <laughs> with, um, uh, I've been working uh, with the people in the Flutter Dev Camp in, in GDG London, and we've been developing a small open source uh, Flutter application for doing um, uh, brain, come on, um, for shopping, like an e-commerce app, basically. Um, now, uh, I've, let's, I guess, yeah, I don't think I've got anything else. Oh, um, Invoice Ninja would be another good one. That's uh, by... Um, the guy. The guy that um, does the uh, all, all, uh, all thing... All, all things it's a, it's, 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 it's a it's widget. Um, it's all widgets. It's all widgets. Hillel, Hillel, Hillel. Uh, Hillel yes. made that, and that's uh, Invoice Ninja is open source. You can find it on GitHub, and that's made with Flutter. Uh, so. Yeah. There's some very large projects that are done in Flutter that are open source. In fact, It's All Widgets has a selection box that you can search, and one of the things you can select is it's open source. So if you want to find... Uh, open source projects in a particular category, go to itsallwidgets.com and type in your search query there and click on open source. So that's yeah. kind of cool. Yep. Uh, next question here. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And next question is actually directed at you. Please add live debugging to your queue. So there we go. Uh, yeah, that's where well, maybe we'll, maybe you'll make a mistake today, Simon, and need to use the debugger for a change instead of just maybe. saying, "Oh, I know what's wrong," and then fixing it right away without telling us what you then just observed. Yeah, You're very good me. at solving things. Okay, I will. I will interrupt. Me, I'll explain it. Right. I will I mean, interrupt whenever you say, oh, I know what's wrong. I will interrupt to say, what? What's wrong? <laughs> like that scene from uh, Big Trouble Little China. What? What just happened? <laughs> that's, that's, that's one of my yeah. favorite films. Yeah. yeah, that one scene. It's just brilliant. Yes. Uh, our final question for today until we get into live coding is opinions about Dart as a server language. I guess Go has better primitives for concurrency. Ooh, them's fighting words. But what do you really think? Uh, P.S. You guys are awesome. That's not fighting words. I'll agree with that last statement for sure. And yeah, then let's yeah. go ahead and answer the first part. <laughs> um, it's interesting you say that. So I think um, the Dart standard library is actually uh, it's been getting better and better every release. More and more things. Um, the async stuff. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree on primitives because. Um, there are uh, first level packages and third level packages, third party packages that actually just make that awesome. Um, there's a ton of them. Um, I, I briefly just 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 bring up um, what was it? It was uh, this, this. So so to be clear, again, if you go to the uh, oh, on, API dot dot API dot 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 dev, uh, and then you'll find in here that you've got dot async package. These are all the primitives that are built in for for inside of um, uh, Flutter uh, Dart's core, right? So that's fine. Right. This is all your basic primitive stuff, and it has async and await and await for and async star. There's a good actually. There's a good page. Um, I'll put this in the chat for those that don't know uh, concurrency in Dart uh, and how that works. And you have yeah. isolates, which also help. Uh, and that's that's a great scheme. I won't go into it now. However, there's also a package called uh, in pub. If I can find it, called async pa package package async. Uh, yes. Yeah, package async, and this is an extension of what is in the um, uh, you know that contention to the class of the style of Dart async. Uh, and then again, this this gives you again huge numbers of extensions on 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 what you can do uh, with all the built-in infrastructure as well so there's a great number of these that help um there's also uh, another great package which i i would recommend um which is rx dart that's uh yep. run by the community as well and um you can find that here rx dart uh, rx dart is along the style of of uh the react uh what's it called uh i can't remember what rx stands for now the React, yeah, uh, whatever oh, thing is. in here. Right. 
anyway the the it's rx amazing. observer balls and that sort of comparison yeah. but this is um the dart the dart way of doing it um this does probably need a bit of an update with dart 3 to, to better do things with records and so on but again mm. this has all of the all of the expected things you normally get like a map a flat map map switch map um all sorts of things debouncing a stream so you can just do this yep. debounce stream and then give it a timeout and that's it you know you can see here you you uh, add rx start and it gives you an extension method that you can just put on any stream debounce time right boom done you don't even have to think about it so this is also great. debounce there's debounce and package async too so it doesn't have to go to rx start for that but yeah there's, but there's a there's anyway there's a bunch of uh things that can yeah. help and i think it can be a bit overwhelming for quite a few people to begin with understanding streams and streaming and pipelines. Um, so I think the materials around RX and there's a lot of documentation now around RX and, and, right. and um, it, it, it works really well. Now RX uses this notion of observables, which um, uh, well, actually look, looks like there's a chart here. There you go uh, about what happens in, in, in an observable and what happens in dark streams. But, um, yeah, anyway, there, there's slight differences, but uh, it means that you actually do get, um, if you remember rightly, there is actually a, uh, yeah, here it is. There is actually the RX pattern in here with observables. So you can continue to use observables, if I remember rightly, but it's been a while. Uh, anyway, but yeah, I'd highly recommend that as well. Um, what was, um, uh, yeah, so it was Go has better primitive currency. I, I think that's that's depends. I, I do I do I'd be honest with you. Go routines are just the same as async functions in when it comes to uh Dart. Um I do like channels. Channels in Golang are just lovely. I do wish we had a primitive in the language which let us set up a so at the moment we have that, but you have to set up ports and this kind of mechanism of exchanging ports and making a double ended pipe and all this kind of stuff. And I feel like it's very much a minutia, like like the language. It's there, but it's boilerplate. And I feel like if the dark language could do anything, adding like something like channel from GoLang just to be able to like instantly create this kind of way of communicating between two two points in two isolates and things like that, that would be really great. But um, yeah, um, I, when it comes to dark and server language, used it in lots of server side code works brilliantly. Um, yeah, I, it, it it works. It compiles down to machine code. You get the same thing as Golang, a single binary. Yeah. Um, so I, the other day, just as a little funny, I was uh, I was trying to figure out how to do a mutex to make sure that a chunk of code was only going to be run by one thread at a time. And then I had to realize that's how all code is run in Dart. There's only, <laughs> unless there's an async await somewhere in the middle, then, then there's it's going to be run from beginning to end with no interruptions for anything I'm doing in here. These are all atomic at one level. So it's like, wow, yeah, that does simplify a lot of things that we don't actually have the need for locks, for example. Oh, man, it's so much easier with Dart. So I, I do to... like that we go Golang does the same thing with uh, uh, its channels and memory. It's really nice um, with isolations, basically the same as isolates. Um, uh, but yeah, it's the notion of take the the underlying threads out of the equation and think about. Um, oh, there you go. Thank you, Craig. Last thought: the rule for async and Dart is asynchronous code can never interrupt synchronous code that is definitely something that people yeah. need to get used to and i occasionally forget so uh, however isolates can help in that situation i just say that oh yeah and isolate.run people please go look up isolate.run nobody's using it yet and it's so cool oh Check i'm using it, it. Not, well, you, not, well cool people are using it cool people are using it but it's not being used i can't tell you the number of medium articles i've seen in the last 30 days that have talked about i spawn and then say oh but there's this new compute thing that actually makes it easier and i go oh computer so ancient compute was so, so if, if no the, the global compute function actually if you go look at it now uh if you go look at the source code just does uh, oh, isolate.compute. If you go to isolate.compute, though, and let's see if we can go to the source code. Uh, it'll be the one place I'm trying to find it. Hang on. No, nope, that should have. Why well, you no know work? No. Oh, all right. Um, anyway, 
I uh, I, think, I wonder if I can find the compute function license. Can I do that in here? I, th I think your point was uh, that I, compute I, now calls it call, run. It just, yeah, it now calls isolate.run, essentially. So yeah. so but, that ends up in here. So the idea is you can do stuff like this. Await isolate.run. That will spin up in a separate isolate. And it uses um, what's called isolate groups or, or lightweight isolates. And they spawn up really quick and shut down. And they can be reused. And there's a bunch of other things in there, which are pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, isolate.run. Um, if you use isolate.spawn, which is the one that... Um, that uh, spawn or spawn URI. This is the the underlying mechanism. I said with ports, really complicated. Don't do that, probably. Uh, but if you do do this, your entry point function that you pass in must call isolate.exit. That's very important. If you it never returns from that, it terminates isolate. If you don't do isolate.exit from your um, from your standard isolate spawns it will just kill the isolate. It cannot be reused. So you lose this kind of not fast sort of isolate reuse. But literally, isolate.run is a wrapper around all that. It does it all for you. And if you actually scroll down, I think the implementation is here somewhere. Um, here you go. Isolate.run, completer, send, receive ports, blah, 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 blah. And eventually it does isolate.spawn. And then uh, inside its computation fun function, its runner, it does, um, it was a remote execute, does isolate.exit. And does all the handles of the port. So you don't have to do all this kind of stuff. It's, it keeps it nice and simple. So I still don't run. Yeah. And from my understanding, it, it is fairly lightweight in that it's not copying parameters to and from through ports. Yeah. So it, it's basically just taking a chunk of memory and saying duplicate that, which is a trivial action. And then actually, no, it doesn't even do that. It just marks it as uh, owned by the other yes. thread. Yeah. So you have a. Uh, um, Fast. It's not even copy and write. One more thing. Um, yeah. It's essentially shared memory. So, so executable memory that doesn't change can can just be reused. So, which is basically essentially right. where it goes. So, the certain right. memory that like stateful memory, the memory that holds all your objects, that that is not reused. That's isolated. That's the whole point of an isolate. But there's a chunk of it that can be reused. Uh, so it speeds up the, the start. And then, the and then if you add that to the pool package, that's a first party thing in the pub. You can have say ten isolates all running in in batches, which is pretty cool. So uh, I'm I'm gonna do a screencast on that someday soon. It's on my list. It's on my shorter shortest part of my list. So I will show that all to you real soon. Anyway, uh, I think that was the last question. So yeah. we can go ahead and start live coding. Yeah, indeed. Um, I just want to quickly. Just, come on, uh, there, there was somebody asked a question after that, but I said, no, like, yes, the page call effects cool. It does need to be redone though, because it's using, not using uh, anything optimal anymore. Um, <laughs> so, so, so probably don't use that in production code. Um, please share the e-commerce code. I did uh, in the chat, and I'll share it again. It's wow shopping, uh, and we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Um, cool. The Google I.O. flip card uses Dart on server side. Yep, there you go. It's a good example. People that are looking for it. Um, I think. That kind of covers the questions and things. I think I did see one from Craig earlier about. Um, he was saying something about Fuchsia. If you meant that one, yeah, I can't find it though. Oh, that was it. I found yeah. it. There you go. Uh, Fuchsia is very unlikely to materially influence Flutter. There you go. So that answers that question. Great. Right. At least right. not anymore. So let's, yeah, let's let's crack on here, shall we? Move on, yeah. So, are we going to continue the app that we've been building, or do you I, still need I, to get work so, done for that I, workshop? I, I'd like to continue because I really at the end of the month, I want that app to be a fully functional e commerce app as a good template example of here's how you do an application in Flutter. I feel like that would be a great example for everyone. Cool, uh, yeah. So, so, that's where I'd like to get to eventually. However, we don't have to start with that. Um, so, someone um, the other day, let me uh, let me find the link here, which I completely lost. And we had a couple of questions about the debugger. So if you want to show off the debugger as you're doing this, that would be cool. Let's see what I can do. Um, sorry, bear with me. I've, I'm losing windows everywhere, left, right, and center right now. Yeah. This is what Simon, for all of you who are curious, this is what Simon looks like just before every show. <laughs> You guys don't get to see that, but this is that right running, here. This is what it looks running, like right before running the show. around like a headless chicken. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> and eating crisps. Oh. It's, on, it's, on, it's, it's on the other. It's on the other screen. Of course, it is. Um, right where are we are. Entire screen. Sure. Uh, so we'll do two things here. Uh, let's see. Bear with me. One second. I'll get my 
Nice. Things are materializing. See them in their our, our view. I can see things materializing. It's like smoke comes up. Little stars start popping out. <laughs> it's like, uh, what was it? What was it? Stuff in their eyes. That was no TV program. Conjuring. Uh, You're conjuring in a display. Yes, sir. See, there it is. I told you. He's conjuring this all the time in the behind the scenes. I'm, I'm conjuring things. Yes. Uh, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll start on, uh, I think, some of the simpler examples. So I just. Slight, doing, slightly uh, bigger. Little, uh, very just straight off. Um, is that too small? Really? Just one. Yeah. yeah. That's, just, not, that's yeah, the normal small. size, I think. But um, okay, okay. It's it's yeah, tinier on my the, screen, uh, but it's because I'm not, I don't have a full screen view. Board. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I'll Hopefully, go. people can see that better. I know. Yeah. It, I'll watch the I'll watch the chat. Right. In case um, I'm yelling. So we'll just make uh, my uh, terrible. Sure, go for it. Um, so, so what was the some of the things we came up with? So one was uh, the focus rings. So we could try that out. Someone mm. the other day, which um, I'll try and dig out here. Uh, 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 someone uh, posted this on Twitter the other day, and it was like, "How do I make this?" Uh, how do I make this like animate between these two, you know, these different boxes nicely? You know, I figured that was kind of an interesting topic. It actually has some subtle problems there and it can have some. Oh, it's, yeah, problems, it's jiggling just a little bit. How do you keep those letters in place while you're doing that? Well, that's, weird. I'll, I'll, that's, that's another thing we can show. So uh, that's oh, another good. Thing um, nice. And I did kind of want, I did get tickled by, uh, by this, um, bottom sheet example animation i kind of wanted to give that a go um, oh, okay I think that might be kind of fun to kind of do this kind of expanding bottom sheet animation uh whether we get to that or not maybe maybe not maybe that's for next week we'll see um and then uh we'll, 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 we'll try to cut this show off at three hours too so you know <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, so. you have an hour and 15 so as you're making your plans hour and a quarter we'll is all it. you've got yeah we get to it um uh, which plugin is used Differentiating the file types and the project in the IDE, it's so cool. Oh, you mean like the different uh, icons and things? Uh, I think it's just like material icons or something. Um, I know. Let's let's take a look. I completely forget plugins. I think it's like a, yeah, yeah. It's Atom Material Icons. There you go. There you go. That's that's the plugins right there. there you go. Uh, plugin homepage. Cool. There you go. I'll put it in the chat. There you go. You can take that. Uh, there you go. So. Uh, let's let's crack on with uh, where we're. So let's do the the focus thing first, and then we can post that, and then we'll go from there. So, all right. Uh, so we have material atlas to do the basic things here. In fact, you know what? We don't really need to go that far down here. We'll just do a material app up here. I don't intend to show anything more than a single route. Uh, and then we want a debug false and home. We'll have a home widget. That's probably better, and that has a piece of material. And that gets us going. Let's run that up on our device whilst it's doing that. So um, we, I was saying before that, you know, if you want to, um, I don't, I think this, what, this is from the dot. So there must be material three design documents, right? Yeah, it looks like I mean, it. Uh, well, it should be. Because these this number one here is not part of the design. That's just a reference point to like point it out. I think. Mm -hmm. I'm just. Oh look, here you go. Go web rings focus outline material views. Um, um, I feel like that should be a. This should be like a proper like link in here. Is it not a link anywhere? Oh. Bring material three to Flutter. There's a link to another issue ticket. Um, that's kind of bugging me. Material three. Let me just search. Material three. How would they call them? Focus rings. Focus rings. States. Material three. Aha. Aha. Maybe. Should we say? Uh, state layers. 
to part this, I thought. My search took me here and it's lying to me. How about active states, applying states? Enabled, disabled. Focused has to be. Focused. Ah, here we are, focused. Um, yeah, that's not helpful. It let me down. All right, we'll try this anyway. Let's go to the drinks. So, uh, oh, we started the card flipper. That's not good. We don't want the card flipper from before. <laughs> Let's move it to a that crazy stuff. card flipper where multiple cards would flip at the same time sometimes. Yeah, right. I remember that. Uh, we fixed that. We fixed that. Yeah, I, know. Um, I know. Right. Let's let's do this. So we want to, um, I guess, we'll have some list tiles, and each of the list tiles will have a focus. So there's a focus traversal group. We probably want a list view, right? So let's do a list view. Uh, list view builder. Why not? And our item. That way you can have infinite items. You can just have exactly. millions of items. Read my mind. Scroll, baby, scroll. Scroll like your heart depends on it. So in here, we have a list tile and it's uh, content padding. It's a title, it's a title, text, item, number, whatever it's Dollar index. Index. Dollar index. Item three. Um, Make it simple. We have a leading, which is just. Is there like a list of all icons? That would be helpful. I don't think there is like an icon of values. Is there? A list of all icons? Yeah, there's the icons page and it scrolls forever. No, I mean like something that I could just cycle through really nicely, like an array. Oh. It's a show. Oh. Oh, wait, it's an enum, so it should have dot values. No, it's not an enum. No, it's not an enum. They're all, they're uh -huh. all like top level statics. You're all statics. Oh, why did they do that? Oh, before enhanced enums. That's why. Twenty six thousand oh. lines later. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, you know what we could do? what we could do. We could be really sneaky, actually. We said that I, I'm. I'm uh, do you want to do that? Do you want to do that? I'm kind of thinking i shouldn't but maybe i can let's do this let's do this i'm gonna be sneaky i'm gonna put this in there oh no oh no <laughs> let's oh, see what no. happens i don't know what the wrong plus index oh no oh yeah oh yeah it can, it can either yeah. work can work oh no material oh, oh, right. that's, that's oh yeah material. you took the material out to make that <laughs> yeah. i was trying to remember i forgot out. why you took the material out I said put it inside hey, material please Look, lots of different oh, icons. Look. Yeah. Look at that. Let's let icons be icons. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, all right. So now we've now we've got our little test test widgets like we saw on the screen there. Uh, now animate them. Yeah. Make them animated. Uh, so we want to have a overlay that gives it a a border and a color, uh, and we want to focus and traverse down. So uh, what we can do here is around our. Well, we won't put. A, I won't put a um, a focus group in there just yet. What we need is, uh, yeah, we get a route so it has a focus scope. And whenever if those don't know, whenever you use home, it actually wraps in the in the themes route builder, which is a material route by default. And um, so we uh, and every route gives a focus scope, so we don't have to worry about like a top level focus scope. Instead, we just make focus widgets. So in this case, we want to make out, what do we call this? What was it called? A ring? What's it? A ring? Focus ring. Focus, focus ring. ring. Okay. So make a focus ring widget. It's going to take a child. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Maybe the, oh, oh, wrong button. This oh, I don't know. Is yeah. that better for everyone? That might be better for everyone. Uh, it was it's better for me. I'm smaller. Size, size of things. All right. Um, this dot child and we passed it in. You might, want to pull your, you might want to pull your emulator up so it's just above the, the top of our pictures. Oh, we don't need anything at the bottom anyway right now. So okay. All right. Just ask. Oh, you said it now, so now I have to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> your fault. I'm, I, I, I'm just a backseat driver. It's fine. It's what I do. Um, or navigator you know, or something. I, I, I can switch somebody. between the uh, image and that. 
guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That make that. Okay. There you go. So you can see what we're building here. Right. Cool. So um so here we we basically this is your normal normal uh what you want to be doing when you build a wrapper widget. So it's a it's a stateful widget, it takes a child and it emits that child essentially as its child. So now it can wrap the whatever child that you pass it. So now I can take this list tile, wrap it in a focus ring, and now I'm applying the focus ring to those children. Now I can take the child that was given. I don't care if it's list tile or anything, and we can wrap that. So if we wrap that with a box, uh, with a decorated box, um, we can now give that a decoration, box decoration or a shape decoration. Um, and then that decoration could have our border. Is it border? I think it's border. Yeah. Border to all. And we want a uh, what width three and color. Let's do red. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, actually, what is that green? Was it olive or something? Is that olive color? I don't know. Another color, dude. Uh, I think that's is that probably right. No. Nope. I'll do. We'll do green. Why not? Um, yep. And then uh, stroke a line. What's stroke a line? Ooh. Oh, okay. So this is great. So this is about like how we want to visibly draw it, right? Draw fully yep. inside the border path is consistent with stroke a line. Okay. Cool. So by default, it's that. So I wonder if we did, so if we did minus three, what does that do? Oh, look at that, that's cool. More you know. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So one, so 100% is, cool. is the width. So if you want to draw it outside, so if we put, uh, I'm just kind of curious about this, but if we put a uh, padding in our list view, um, we don't have to, but yeah, let's say I wrapped it, let's just say I even wrapped my list view in a padding. Uh, just, oops, that's not padding. Uh, there's a padding. Right. Uh, and we did, I don't know, let's just do a lot. So we inset it. What this, what that this stroke line does, if we put one, it's going to put it completely on the outside. Uh, and then by default, our list view is clipping, of course. Uh, I don't think you can turn that off, but the nature of how it works. But, oh, no, click behavior. If we can. Click none. There you go. Really? Cool. So that's outside the items. Uh, I don't think it makes a difference to what we want to do. I just thought it was kind of interesting. Yeah. You're right. way down in the weeds here. Way <laughs> down in the weeds. Let's get back to what we're doing. So um, so we've got our border color. And um, what's, what's style when it's at home? Border style. Solids. Uh, solid or none. Okay. Um, let's do a uh, border radius. Do those horrible, horrible curve corners that uh, Danielle was upset about. Yep. We did that just about the fact that the underlying widget actually has curved. You can't, it's very hard to see if it actually has white corners down here. Um, and yeah, you shouldn't probably do that. Um, let's have four. Yeah, why not? Let's do that. It looks horrible. Right. So we only ever want one highlighted. Um, we only want one highlighted, but that's fine. So we want to control our highlight and what highlight that we show to the user. We also want to in front, and we can also put a fill on this. So if I add a color to this and say colors dot light green, let's do oh line. Oh, there you go. Line. It's a dark, it's a dark line. In the cup, the in color. Me in the I line. think that is. I think that's the color. Put, in there. Put a lime in the coconut. Uh, if we choose lime with opacity, say 10, 20, 10%. Um, okay. There we go. That, now let's do 30%. So that's actually behind the widget, right? Like, I don't think the list tile is actually painting anything. So if I was to wrap this in a um, no, I see, I need it. Uh, just, just do containers to uh, yeah, color box. Color box. Um, color start red. Uh, it's really horrible. So, 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 
So what's happening here is the actual list tile is drawing, but then our focus we want on top of the items. So we do that with in, in a decorate box with position. So there's a decorate position and we can say foreground. So now it draws on top of the child, which is what we want. That obviously looks terrible. Mm. But now we can get rid of our red and it will look exactly the same as it was when it was underneath because uh, it wasn't drawing anything. But now we've kind of got this highlight. So this is nice. This is this gets us somewhere. Um, all wow. right. So now, now we've done this. We only want to do it. Uh, we only want to apply for the, select the de one. decoration for, for the, the select focused one. one. So yeah, now we wrap this in a focus widget. A focus widget That's provides a, a, Bull. a, a well, also, if you don't know, this will, uh, you can provide a focus node of your own, but you don't have to. It will generate one and manage it for you. So that's really nice. And what you do is you get a callback on focus changed. And that's all we want to mm. do. So we leave the focus node in there. We add our on focus change callback. So on focus change. Now we can have a, and we could have something like show decoration and a uh, void on focused set show decoration if we're focused right wow nice and simple and now we take that flag and inside our layout where I have a decoration we can say if it's shown the decoration then we use that one otherwise we can use a box decoration is that like an empty constructor that would be really helpful okay. I keep thinking focused has two S's. Maybe it doesn't. I don't see any spelling errors. Oh, no, it, doesn't not have, no, it doesn't have to. Okay. Um, and there you go. So so now if I restart, um, none of them have it. And if I click, none of them have it because it's not focused, right? However, <laughs> uh, can I, the question is, can I from here, because it's an actual phone. There we go, tab. Now I'm using the keyboard to go Ooh. up and down. Nice. And there's our wow. focus thing that you want to do. Yeah. Nice Just copy all that down, whoever asked. Do a screen oh, grab right. and then do OPR. I, I will post this on just in just a minute. Now, I just wanted to show there's something else here that we can actually do, which is uh, an animated. Uh, I don't know if there's an animated decorated box. Decorated box? So, so oh. animated container is actually the, the closest way to do this. Um, and if we use an animated container, we can actually provide the decoration the same way. Uh, and then if I got my. You got your uh, you got your hand clapping there for doing what you did so far. Cool. Sorry. Hang on. Hang on. What? Oh, I'll just say you got your hand clapping for doing that. There oh, you go. Thanks. Um, so now we've got an animated uh, container here. We can set the duration. Oh, uh, those party papers, party papers. Let's let's make Maybe. this. Can't tell. Uh, let's just make this like one second for testing, and then what else do we want? We want. Um, we can have a curve. I think uh, we can actually just. I think ease in, ease out is probably the curves. Ease in out. Ease in out. Yeah. That's easy. And then uh, uh, foreground decoration is the one we want because that puts in the foreground. All right. So with that, if I restart. Where, where's the control go for, are you reading the current uh, show decoration state? Uh, yeah. So that, that's here. Oh, I see it. I see it. It's all right. I missed that. Okay. So, so now when I go and it cycles through and fades obviously very slowly now which is not oh that's great that's cute so if we if we just change this to k theme change generation which is kind of a nice uh constant now when i move you get this kind of like nice you can't probably yeah. kind of see it on the on the it's probably a bit too fast on the scope uh on the you can see it a little bit through here well, you can see it a little bit on the screen here. What's the other one? Theme. YouTube. Animation generation. Just put times two. Times two. Oh, could be. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, times two. <laughs> These are, it's like, it's kind of have... arbitrary at that point, but, but I, I probably put it yeah. in. Um, 
yeah. I think about three fifty might be the nice mark here. Maybe three hundred. Three sixty two, three sixty seven, maybe. Right. Yeah, I see yeah, those. That kind of feels nice. Yep. Cool. Um, and there you go. So that's how you do that. Um, right. I'll um, I'll post that as an example. So you go down as much as you want. Um, <laughs> That's interesting. Actually. There you go. Look, it comes down from the top. Anyway. Oh wow. Oh, so it stays uh, with the scroll item, even if the scroll item goes off screen. Yeah. So if I scroll up and then scroll back down. Oh no, it's gone. Oh, because they've been recycled. Oh, if I had them, it's been oh, it persist the state. How right? would you fix that? Oh, do you, you want to show? You? I will show. No, no, no. I will show you. Do. <laughs> with, that's going to require. Um, oh, oh, keep you, alive. You, yeah, right. keep and mix, mix and keep alive, whatever, right? Uh, uh, client keep alive. Oh my god, my brain. Uh, what? Yeah, what is it? Something keep alive. Keep alive, client mix it. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. And then you say, I want to be kept alive, and still keep the state alive, um, even when it scrolls off the screen. I should do. Oh. We'll find out. That's what, maybe it's. That's maybe. one way to do it. But could you also uh, somehow lift that state above the builder? Yes, and that would. Pro well, I mean, that the problem here is it's not the it's not this state that's the problem. It's the fact that the focus node is being recycled. Uh, okay. Now, right. I don't particularly want to keep kajillions of focus nodes for things that are off screen that wouldn't be needed, right? So, yeah. I think if I scroll this down, and we go. Yeah, see so now can I yeah, so I, I before I was going straight down, it's coming straight down. That's actually moving down from the top now. There we go. So if I go down wow. to seven, keep scrolling and then come back. Seven is still highlighted. Hmm. Um I mean, dubiously you shouldn't need to use keep alive. I mean, to be honest, that's probably something you that is, you're not gonna actually ever see in production. Um, yeah, it's so. it's probably slightly shocking to someone to have scrolled off something that they focused and have that appear again. But they, they wouldn't be if if they're focusing with this, they wouldn't be scrolling. Ah, <laughs> uh, right, right. Okay. The focus would be directed in the scroll. So cool. Yeah. Um, let me post that in the gist quickly, and then and then everyone grab that. There's a follow-up question here. Uh, how complicated would it be if the border should actually move between the two items and not ease in and out on each individual? So you're talking about okay. animating. So that's uh, play. Ah, so 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 Chris Christian there has has just dumped on to, jumped onto the the next topic, which the is other exactly problem. what which was the yes. other example here of what this person right. is trying to do. This so person we'll do is one. trying to animate. Uh, um, oh, our faces are away. Sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, this person is trying to animate the box between multiple widgets. And this is interesting because the widget should denote the size of the box. They're not fixed widths, let's say. Um, so there's some other complexities here that I'll show you people how to deal with that. Uh, but yeah, if you want the item, if you want the uh, border rather than like, animating to actually like move down like a, a shade uh, up and down, you can you can do that as well. Um, it, would, it would involve wrapping... Um, the list in another widget. Maybe we do that in a second. Um, but let me post this as it is before we lose it. Um, you probably need to put it in a stack because you probably have to move the focus yeah. ring down with the stack, right? Exactly what I was thinking. Oh, good. Focus. Great minds think alike. So what's our excuse? Uh, uh, focus ring. Wrong. Sorry, focus ring. Okay. Sorry, just, just instant make, publishing of cool code exactly. to steal. I defined open source yesterday as you write something and then share it with me. <laughs> uh, 9th, 9th, August. is in the chat for those that want that code uh, we'll move on now uh, right so 
hopefully that kind of stuff. So let's let's see how do we do this this um, this mm, effect yes. of of um, animation. So that kind of answers that. I might actually post uh, this. Just just did. Uh, I just post on the ticket so people that just an example of this uh, in on update update. Okay. Comment. Where have you? So anyone you got this other weird? Do you have this? What do you have the jet range thing up there for? I did not bring that up. Oh well, no, maybe I did actually. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right. So let's do this kind of uh, uh, animation, yeah. shall we? Uh, we may come back and do it for this. I just want to do it for this first because this is a. Uh, I, I, I let this person know that we'll be doing it on the show. So. Um, cool. Let's start another example. Uh, what should we call this? Um, what would you call that? Focus. Uh, tab, oh. tab, tab selector. Focus tab selector. <laughs> Focus tab selector. Uh, no, that, oh, it's it's there's it's called something in in iOS. It's like the the bar that you select one of the bar items on. What do you call that? It's like a. Uh, the chat now? This is where I should. I should be staring at. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I should be staring at Material IO and trying to figure this. Well, let's, out. Let's, 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 let's let's carry on here. Uh, so so uh, let's call this uh, um, highlight. <laughs> Thing. I, I, highlight. I, I, highlight selected. Select item. highlighter. Item selected. <laughs> I, I, I have spoken. Uh, right. Yeah. Segmented, segmented control. There it is. Segmented control. Oh, is that it? Yeah. There, there. Thank you, Lucas. <laughs> Jeez. I knew there was some segmented. name for that. Oh my segmented god. Segment <laughs> selector is now this new name for this. Okay, we got it. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh. so let's uh, let's start that, and we'll we'll create. It segment naming things selector. always so hard now this selector um we need to know um first of all um it'd be nice not to care about what the children are there could be any widgets we want that way we we can um right so I take a list of widgets yeah so so doing that let me take these earbuds out for a second please ah it's better Testing, testing. Can you can I hear you? It's a little quieter. Sorry, it's quieter. Just slightly, to me anyway. I can still hear you though. You're still fine. Should be quiet. That's oh wow! Starting, that's How's starting, that? That's starting to. Oh no! Now I'm hearing the background noise. Are you sure you switched to the right thing? Yeah. No, I've not changed anything. That is the same. Microphone as before. You're, wow. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Then. Um, it, you, you, you're old. You're legible or whatever the equivalent is for audible. Audible. There we go. Not legible. Right. I, I can't. I can't read you. All right. So, um, <laughs> all right. So first of all, let's let's go here. We want a list of list of widgets, right? And um, we'll call that um, children. That's normally what we do. Right. And pass that in make it required and then we'll have a row oh we this may be done already there's a decoration indicator on a tab bar class so maybe you uh, could yeah. just drop it there. but then you can't do your cool slidey thing that you want to do uh, so the point is how do we do it ourselves and also not use material yes. design right yeah right uh, we can go look at that okay. though i mean it's well, why not right it's a great example let's um yep it is let's get this uh let's get a. Uh, this in place so i think we'll want a center oh that video is self-animating i was wondering how are you doing stuff in your text window and also it oh, moving yeah, <laughs> uh, if it's distracting I'll, I'll take it off screen not yet not some yet. cats okay. are confused cats are confused but otherwise we're okay <laughs> squirrels we squirrels are like over all over the place now <laughs> Three sixty-five. Oops, sixty-five. 
uh, off by one. Wrap that with a default text style. What do we want? Um, I don't know, it's too pretty large. 32 might be too big. We'll find out. All right, let's, I guess, run that up. Um, why is that saying that's an error? Unfinal final fields. Oh, that be me. There you go. All right. Uh, let's run that up. All right. So we have a row. We have our we have our widgets. And I guess we'll let's take a look at what um, some were saying. There was a tab bar has a tab bar widget has a. Was it indicated? Was it indicator? Wherever it was. So here's uh, the indicator. Yeah. Direct uh, yeah. decoration and indicator decoration yeah. is, I guess, just down here somewhere. Here we go, get indicator. Guess the one passed in, defaults to the theme. Otherwise, return the underlying tab indicator. So that's nice. And the indicator is used in a indicator painter yeah that can also work and i guess that all that's doing there is uh, essentially all this lovely code for painting uh, a widget uh, sorry painting the the uh, create box painter from the indicator and then they paint the box yeah I mean, wouldn't be too far off. So let's see where we're going here. Um, why have I, why can I not see text? What did we do wrong? Uh, color, it's black, let's make sure it's black. Aha, it was white text, interesting. Because it's hard to see white on white, yes. Teamed up white, maybe that's weird, but okay. Um, no, team David does not. I oh, can't be made constant. You know what? I don't care. I can see on the screen. <laughs> um, right, so we want, um, we want a main axis alignment to be center. So this is kind of a this is kind of a, a, a known quantity here. So this is this is kind of um, it's always the problem for developers that come into Flutter for, from an imperative kind of style of doing layouts to a declarative style in which you don't know the position of all your widgets so how do you do this fancy stuff right um anyway um so first of all i want to uh, wrap each one of these widgets right so we're going to map them map each one Um, uh, I want to, uh, and I want to wrap that in a, uh, we could say decorated box, which is basically what he's doing right now. Um, we you want can to do move, a four in loop. You can do a four in loop there since you already have that being in Sorry? dot, dot, dot. You could use a four in loop there and make it a little easier than the math. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Four uh, final child in children. Yeah. And then we can uh, say each child. Um, I like that syntax much better now. Oh, I do as well. I don't know why I was thinking, but anyway. Um, okay, uh, that's why I'm here. I'm here to make uh, the uh, the in between moments thoughts for you. So what I want to do is um, is wrap this in a keyed subtree. That's the one I'm looking for. Keyed subtree. And uh, we want to pass a key to this. Um, 
and Ooh. Ooh. make this a state. I think form. I know where you're going. I think I know where you're going with this. this cool. So we need to know where the widget is on the screen and how it's been rendered, right? So that we can yep. then paint something differently. That's essentially what comes down to all of this. And to do that, right. you use the context. That is the element of the widget. And to get the element of the widget, you need to have a key. So that's where this goes. So basically what we want to say here is we will have a late uh, global key uh, array. We'll call it unknown uh, keys. Let's call it keys. Where a widget starts up, we want to generate keys as being. Um, did you want list global key? I did want to list, but you are correct. Thank you very much. That's um, what I do. And we want a list of generate, and that's going to be widget.children.length. And we're return a global key. So that's kind of generally that's great. Now the problem here, this although this functions and it works, um, this isn't all you need to do, right? Um, so down here, if we put now keys in the uh, we need keys index. Oh, oh, we get to use our cool trick. Index. Oh yes, indexed. Yes, index index. child. For those that don't know, you now have this. Yeah, that's really so cool. rocks. Uh, that's that so rocks. Have the record. That really helps. Yeah. That's exactly the reason why we need it. That is the <laughs> exactly. And and a good thing we're um, using four in, or else you'd have to do that with the map and then do the record with the syntax of the record extraction and all. No, no, this is faster. <laughs> This is so much faster. All right. So now, so what happened? This breaks, and this breaks in a couple of ways. This will break if you ever update the children of your widget. The state stays the same, different number of keys. It will break. Yep. So this is where did update widget comes in, and in this case, we want to say um, if widget dot keys dot uh, widget dot children dot length does not equal old widget dot children dot length then we want to say if it's less then we want to trim it and get rid of those other widgets right so if um widget children is less than old widget dot children dot length then we know we need to say keys is equal to uh, keys is it sub list just take the length just do the old list dot take, take length Oh yeah, we can do take and then say old. Uh, oh, sorry, widget dot children dot length. Let's let's get rid yeah. of this. You know, this is getting let's get this is getting too much. Yeah, <laughs> it's gotta be a it's gotta be a fast idiomatic yeah. way of doing what you're about to do. It's it's so. I always thought so. I always found it one of those things that it's... you kind of want like a I want an extension on a list which is like resize, right? Yeah, and it just deals with yeah. It. And then it, and then yeah. give give it like a constructor for an element. Because maybe you could make a method. For, I don't know, whatever. But it, it's, right now, I bet FP Dart probably has one. <laughs> right. So let's get back to this old length. It's really simple. So here we go. Old it's length. Take the new length because it's less than to list. Bump done. Else, this is to be honest with you. Now I've done two lists. You could have done could do sub list zero and that, yeah that also works i'm sorry like yeah anyway you could Keep. you could also do you could also pop the end element until it's short enough or add oh, elements until away. it's long enough go. with a while loop on both sides just do oh, while God. then you yeah. then your invariant of both loops is after that Maybe. step it is Maybe. at least that short or the next loop right. <laughs> is so loop if it's long. if it's greater than then we want to take all the old keys and then we also want to generate a new set of keys for the new widgets that are coming in so that would be the remainder of of old length uh, and you're just hiding that looping behind to generate see it's the same thing it's a loop it Let's is loop. Uh, <laughs> uh, wind up our, 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 so here. Um, um, in fact the first part could just be a take and it would just work you could uh, shorten it with the take shit. and okay. then and then add until it's long enough. And there's two steps. No ifs. Right. <laughs> I'm simplifying. <laughs> you're getting paid by the line now is what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's great. More lines. More lines. Right. So yes, yeah, more code. 
Just shut, just shut for a second. Right. So this is what we want to do. So we have uh, the new length, the old length. If it's different, then we need to resize our list of keys. If it's smaller, then we can just take a sub list because we need to keep the same global keys. We can't make a new new list each time because we would lose our references. Um, and mm -hmm. if it's greater, then then okay, great. We'll take the old ones and then include the new ones. And uh, mm -hmm. this, if it's greater, then then this is the wrong way round. So that's my fault. Okay, there we go. So that's what we need to do keep the list the same now the keys are going to be correct that's fine great whatever right so um so okay now we want to keep track of which widget is the is the highlighted one so we'll have a selected index and what we probably want to do is is set that selected index um as being like initial widget, like widget dot initially initial select initial initial selection or something. I don't know. So we can pass it in as a param parameterize that Par parameterize whatever. Just like this, and we'll default to zero. All right. So now we have a selected index. We want to make sure that's the one that's selected, and we want to animate that selection between them. All right, so, okay. So we want uh, we want something to control the animation and we want to know uh, what the rectangle size is going to be for each one and position it appropriately. All right, so first of all, let's, uh, let's think about this. Uh, we want to wrap this in a, we could do a stack. So this is what, um, this is what uh, Randall said earlier. Uh, it's one way to do this. And uh, so we have our, depends on if we want this on in, in front or behind. Yeah. Hmm. And well, if you're going to animate it across, it should, it should obscure the numbers as it animates. Oh, I see. You could, yeah, I guess you could go either way with that. Right. From rect. And our child is going to be our box decoration. Uh, decorate box, sorry. And it's going to have a box decoration, and we can supply that. So uh, let's have a uh, this dot uh, selection decoration make it required um, it could just be a decoration we don't really care it's a box decoration to be honest um, and let's add that in here we can make it any shape we want that's with the shape decoration, if people don't know. Uh, we'll have that same, let's grab that same border we had before. What was it? Had here. Why not? All right. So back to, it's like, you can make this constant. I know. Maybe. Really, all that constant? Wow. Okay. But just a little part of the bottom. Okay. Sorry? Sorry, it's mumbling. Go ahead. All right. Uh, and then I'm also going to want to wrap this. Uh, do you know what? We'll just have each each text widget wrapped. Uh, if we even had like, uh, we should probably do this anyway. Let's say call it uh, selection item or something. Uh, label. text with the label Uh, 
uh, back to this. So we know what we want to have with a decorate box, and the decoration for it is going to be uh, widget dot decoration. Does that allow for any decoration? Oh, probably does. Okay, and now we want our rectangle. So here's the question. Where do we get this rectangle from, right? How do we get that rectangle oh. from our widgets and vice versa? So I bet there's a key to that answer. Oh, nice pop. Oh. Boom. So uh, <laughs> we've got a little uh, rect notifier up here. And um, I guess we can have it. So when you tap on each item, we look it up. But then when do we get your initial one? Uh, we could, uh, there's a couple of ways we can do this. All right, so let, let's do this late rect. I know we'll do a nullable rect here. Mm -hmm. Rect, 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 rect. You've been rect. Uh, if rect. So, so what, one initial, we need, to, we need to get the initial size, which means it needs to be laid out first. Oh, uh, yeah, the key answer. <laughs> um, so, um, Let's put that in there. Okay, so if we have a rectangle, we use it for doing our rendering. Job, job's done there. Now, ideally, what we want to do is let's just use boxy. We could do it with boxy. <clears throat> this wouldn't help. <laughs> okay, we're trying to do, but nice try. Um, so initially, when we our widget starts up, we want to do schedule micro task. And this means that after it's done the layout pass, before it renders it, we're going to get one. We're going to get this. And we can say keys selected index dot. I guess we'll make a function for this. It might be more practical. So update rect for selection. Something like this, I guess. Uh, so we want to get our selected render object. Render box is going to be this dot current context dot find render object as render box. Um, that's the magical line that everyone's probably missing. So we're basically saying get our key, get the context, that's that element from the key, find its render object, and then receive that as a render box because it might be a render sliver or something. We were only doing boxes, that's fine. Now we have our render box. Render box has a size. Bum, bum, bum. And Renderbox also has a as a what's called a parent data, and that's box parent data by default. Parent data. This is where the parent positioned it, and that'd be where the row positioned this child, and we get the offset from that. And if you combine an offset and size with an ampersand, you get a rectangle. Correct. Yeah. Is that the uh, offset local to the? Outer That's box. The local to the to the parent, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Exactly what we want. So. Yeah, cool. Is there a global nice. size to or offset somewhere? Uh, there, there, yeah, you can do you do local to global. So oh, okay. the render, render box has a uh, glo local to global and, lo and global to local. So ah, nice. Okay. Um, Just ask me. To, to, without getting that, you can also do this without the render box if you don't know that it's a render box, and you can actually do local to global as well and do offset zero and then convert that back uh, this this is fine yeah. for what we need um and then we want to do set state on that all right so now we've got that our first initial one is to schedule that micro task and that means that after our first pass goes through it run this function and uh, we can actually Go, run this function. This function is then going to get the render box, get size, update the rectangle, call set state. That calls it again to build, and then we're going to have a rectangle. And it's going to display our render box in that rectangle. Let's see, does it work? Restart. Okay. Uh, now that could be an option. Let's see size box dot. Uh, let's see size box. Question is, do we even have a rectangle? So let's do print, let's do debug printing, build, and go to place with this rectangle. Let's see, do we ever get a rectangle? Is it all working? And 
15 binder, but got more. Uh, I am in the wrong view. That'd be white. Uh, okay. Build null. Oh, look. It blew up. No, no, no. Ew. Has size. Has not been laid out. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so I... Oh, I have, let's try, let's try a, a widget binding. Add post frame callback. Let's try that. Let's, I think just, initially, just gonna, I think for most times your microtask will work just fine. I think this is because this is the top level widget. So there's not an initial frame. There we go. So that does the same job. So now we've got the border. Uh, wonderful. Nice. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, so now we've got our border. Let's go up to our render object here. Ah, and we can divide by the size a number of items to get the no, corners of the. This is, what, this is what I want to get to. So if I put, I'm going to uh, change oh. the range from the ones that are in this test to three hundred eighty thirty five, whatever. So I wanted to show that they they are the different sizes, right? Oh yeah. And yeah. if they're different sizes, then the rectangle should be different. Mm. So we need to transition the rectangle from one to the other. Um, mm. and animate it across which sounds more complicated than it actually is um isn't it one that, of the animated positioned boxes that you can say put, animate the position to the new rect um so animate positions i'm hoping I think, gonna, doesn't it? let's see if this works animated positions from rect and what's a rect? What's a duration? What's it does? Const duration. Let's give it a 300 milliseconds and a curve. Yeah, fast out, slow in. All right. So now we need to identify, we need to make it so when you tap on each one, mm -hmm. it sets the selection index. So we can do that with a, perhaps this in a gesture detector. I love how that's all still in this one four line, this four in line, yeah. because it, you're making one widget, which is one expression, which is the object of the four in loop, because you're only making one thing that has a lot of sub components to it, but it still works. It's cool. I'm going to select it. Selected index. Set selected index. All right. So now up here, let's add in a uh, assessor. Sorry, put it down. Right, set selected index. This is going to take out index, uh, set selection, selected index, equal index, and then update for selection, right? So save and um, That may not do what I wanted to do. Um, let's find out. I think it might complain, but we'll find out. Uh, restart. Let's see what happens. All right. Click. Oh, look. It works. Oh, oh, but it moves the things around a little bit, doesn't it? Or no, am I just, no, it's not moving around. around. Okay. So the one, the one below Watch. does, because that's... Yeah, um, that's broken. <laughs> yeah, it's broken. So that that's because that's trying to do, I don't know what it's doing, how it's doing that, but yeah. Um, it, it has right. a border that has size that when it turns it on, it, the border pushes the object around. That's the one. Yours, so your this, border's above. Yeah, it's not, yeah. not there. To be clear, just for the people that don't know, that because the background of our children are transparent, they're not accounted for in touching. That's why you do opaque. This guarantees that the entire area surface of the child is a touch is a touch target. Wow, that's so that cool! Works. I want to use that now. I want to put that in my next app, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so you'll be able to like tap on it once. That is so cool. Ship it, ship it. That looks great. You didn't use your debugger yet, though. So you have to do something. You have to use debugger. Oh, what a shame. Um, so, so you just added is, print. Until, you added print until it worked. Which so is like one print. 
what we also want in here is a final value changed int on changed. And this is so that we can uh, handle. So normally, we'll make these nullable. And if you pass null as the on in unchanged, you get back. Um, uh, it makes still make it required, but you still set it as null. And this means it won't be tappable, right? So it could just be like the read only view. So we can we can put that in here and say. If it's unchanged, then we do this, otherwise null. Which is unchanged. Which is not unchanged. Um, all right, and then oh an error. Oh yeah, I need to pass it in there. So if I wanted to have this uh, so this is so that I could record the selection, right? So if we wanted to change like the view or a form value or something else, we get it come back. So if I if I tap, it doesn't work because I forgot to put it the callback in there. I'll get there eventually. There we go. So we'll update the screen and then we'll call back unchanged. Uh, so what I've done here, um, every function that is a value changed as a function, if we go into that, as a, oh, if we go into value change, you'll see it's a function declaration, right? Every function has a hidden method called call. Um, you don't see it, that's why it's white. Uh, and if we do a dot, uh, question mark dot, it means if this is null, it doesn't use the call function. And if it's not null, then use the call function. So that's a nice way of making an optional uh, callback. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I run this now, we should get our numbers. There you go, one, two, zero, so on. And oh. then if we make that null, on purpose make it null, so therefore we say we don't want it. I can't click on these, nothing happens now. It's just a read-only state. Um, all right, so there you go. So nice. why don't you call it why don't call it on on tap function? Um, no, because it's really on changed in case the tap. Sorry, sorry. I mean, why don't call it on tap? Do you mean? Do you mean why not? I call this on changed because it's not it's not on tapping. Um, it, uh, the values, the selection values changed. Right. You could tap the same number a couple of times, and that won't it won't trigger a callback. It's on change. It's we actually when you change the value. All right. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. So you've hopefully learned a lot, a lot of new little widgets there and things to to, to try out. But that's, that's great nice to me. Way of, of doing this kind of like highlighting stuff. I want to make it more rounded. Yeah. Twelve. Make it spin as it goes from one number to the next. How, no, just... how about this? How about a shape? Here's something that a lot of people don't know. So never ever use border radius to make a a like a rounded corner shape it's actually a shape decoration is what you're looking for um and there's actually a um you give it a shape and we can give it a stadium border right that's how you give it uh, the different borders so the term border is given to his it's a problem in, i think in the flutter documentation which probably change but a stadium border is the shape it should be called stadium shape to be honest um outline border is not is a shape border a shape border it defines the shape of an object not the actual uh like paint border um anyway so now we've done that he says but then it does have border side <laughs> anyway um let's put that in there why not uh, Here, here's a question that's relevant to that how about uh, a rounded bear, rectangle bear with me, border? Me, I just wanted to finish off showing this okay uh, and we'll jump All right. the uh what was i yeah Leave that up then. so so now i've done this what you actually get is a stadium border look at that oh stadiums woohoo cheering for so the home always, team this always makes it correctly rounded for whatever size it is so if if even if one is really long or one is really tall they're always going to be correctly rounded in fact i wonder what happens if i 
I have no idea. Let's, let's see what happens if I make one taller. It should work, but this is kind of interesting, right? Let's make this, what, uh, 56. Uh, I'm going to center on it. Let's do it. Oh, we should actually, so the problem is it's in a row always, and we don't yeah. pass the row parameters over. So we should probably post over cross axis and main axis alignment at least. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do that. That's, uh, we'll just clone them across and pass them in. Um, yeah, let's do that. There's those three are the important ones. Let's uh, give them some default values. Uh, yeah, let's pop them in there and then do. Pass that over to our row main axis size uh, widget dot and main axis alignment. Okay. That makes it a bit more usable. So now, what means I can go up here and what this means and go cross axis alignment it's a row um, start oh, so that's interesting so on a hot reload why is that oh yeah because main axis long is no center yeah, all right. main axis line, center. I think I make that the default actually just gonna find it. yeah the center and min on the axis let's see there we go. So, um, what was it saying? Cross axis. Yeah. So, why did not this be bigger? Mm. Mm -hmm. Color box. Oh, because the size box doesn't have it, maybe doesn't have a render object attached. Because the red, let's see. That is not high 56. Oh, and maybe it is. Maybe I'm just made my font really big. Probably. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's. There we go. So. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, it sizes it. it. It animates it right, too. Oh, and it goes straight across when you go the other way. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. There you go. And then, of course, because we've got stadium border, it's making it. This is my point. It always makes it circular. Uh, without having yeah. specific size. So we have box decoration, let's take it back. Uh, border, border. Um. Now right, make a little right? clown no, on the side. Was there, was there a question? Uh, yes, there was. Let's see, it was, uh, uh, oh, this one here was the one that was first asked. Like, that's not a school view. How about rounded rectangle border with radius? Oh yeah, we could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Hang on. That's that's a good that's a good shout. Let's let's take it back. Okay. Um so yeah, there's again another another uh shape border object, rounded rectangle border. Um you give it your size and border radius. But again, you shouldn't. You know, my point earlier was don't use border radius to to make it to make it rounded end. That's always a stadium border. Otherwise, you have to try and calculate. It's not always a fixed height. Your text gets larger, then it goes wonky. I've seen it too many times people doing wonky things with. Um... Right, what am I missing? What we're we done? Uh, can it be a time type box shape? Oh yeah, because this is shape decoration. All right, let's try it. Restart. Cool. So I wonder if I had that set to center. Now it's got height, which is the default, right? There we go. Huh. Uh, and we can also maybe wrap that in the center as well. Bon 
There you go. <laughs> Just let me play around here now. All right, we'll stop that. Let's go back to what we had, and uh, I'll post this online as well. Um, I just that's the thing that annoys me. I'm doing a hot reload and it doesn't resync the um the widget ups the rectangle because it maintains its state. So we need to fix that. Let's do that in here. So on a hot reload, it does what's called a reassemble as a reassemble function, and that's where you just call whatever you need to do to make it work. So uh, that's what it was before. And then if I make uh, let's make that center widget larger again. With a size box, height 128. So it's got larger, but our box didn't change, right? When it should have. So that'd be interesting because it should have done a reassemble. Let's see if it's not doing a reassemble. And our update rect definitely doing this i know what we probably need to post frame call back in because it's not got not built the widgets yet that's probably it. yeah let's try again so we'll do it the other way around that's there it is bigger and now if i edit the widgets and remove the size box it should automatically when i hit save yay okay there you go so it, it, the border changed the size appropriately um, all right, I think that's enough of a, an example there. Let's let's post it online. Uh, what was next on our list? That was uh, um, we're still just using the debugger. Use the debugger, yeah. Debugger, debugger. Remember, you're gonna show dev tools. Um, we put a segment selector. Um, we got a few rather random questions here. Let me flag them and then we can just go through them. So the first one's kind of fun. But when you when you get a break there. Um so there's the code is posted in the chat. So there's one note. Cool. I'll post that on reply to uh, the YouTube. Whoever asked for it. Doesn't it was, uh, I don't know. I've lost the post. The post. It's, it's a while ago. Oh, uh, I found it. Sorry. I'll just reply back to the yeah. last thing. Uh, coded it up. Reply. There we go. Yep. Hopefully he'll like that. Um, yep. Maybe Submarinian. Yeah, I'll post it there. If anyone wants to amplify, maybe he gets a notification. Maybe he doesn't. Cool. Don't know who it was. Right. Um, we have a couple of questions if you want to take those about this code. Yes, please. Yeah, Okay, so the first one, uh, I actually answered this already, but can we measure a widget's height or width before build? Well, really no, but kind of yes. <laughs> really, no, you can... really no, but kind of, can we measure a widget's height or width before build? Um, uh, you answer no. this, then I'll, I'll, I'll throw I, I, I'll it. say, no. I'm just going to, I, I, <laughs> no. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, it depends on what you mean, build, though. I mean, obviously, uh, we're looking at the size of the widgets after one frames, but it was built previously. So we're looking at the, hopefully, the same size on this build. <laughs> that would be weird. You have things moving around. This would be wrong by so, lag by so one it won't frame. Be wrong by one, so it won't be wrong by one frame. Let me be clear. So you do a build, right? And then... You're then doing so. Build is take out is build layout draw, right? Then we're getting the size, but it's still going to be the same size on that on that build. If on the next frame it's a different size, well then we're getting that, and then we're using that as the next thing. So it's always still going to be in alignment, but we're just getting it after the fact, not before the fact. That's the difference. Sure. So, yeah. And Can my answer was, yeah, yeah. My, I mean, my answer was because I always bring this up when we do talk about complex layout is boxy. Boxy yeah. can do a dry layout, which sort of runs through most of the process of doing a real layout without actually rendering any of the boxes. 
uh, but it, has, it will let you compute sizes the same way that as long as they reply to dry layout the same way they reply to reply to the real layout, then you can get the the sizes so, and then boxing and give you all the numbers I think, you want. I, I would Ozan, I would say look at intrinsic width and intrinsic height widgets. Yeah, that too. Um, again, it's it's about I think a lot of the time that people try and do things. So this is about drawing, and this made sense at the widget level. But we could have equally have done this with a custom layout. Let's call a custom multi-child layout, and I could show you how to do that. That's another way of doing this. There's a lot of ways of doing the same thing, right? But it's about what right. is more performing and what is easier. I'm giving you like an easy direct reply here to do this kind of thing with widgets. However, depending on what I was building, I'd probably choose to do um, uh, like a, a custom multi-child layout or custom single-child layout or a custom render object. There's, <clears throat> I mean, there's lots of uh, approaches to that. So you're uh, essentially coming in instead of using the canned row to first do the layout, and then you kind of have to wait for it to do its job, and then you find out where you put your overlays on. You could be the guy that's laying out the whole thing, and so you already know where the the pieces are, and then you know where to put the uh, the animation around to the the rest so that you need to do with that for. So by using, so let me go back to the code here, just just so we're kind of on the same page. So what okay. we've done here by using a combination of a stack and a row, we've achieved what those two things cannot do individually by themselves. Right. So we've now composed it out of, of other widgets. However, yeah. um, if we if this is more complicated than this, I'd probably start going into the route of a custom custom layout because I can get all of this and the fact of painting this in the right place all like for free, right? Um, right. in terms of it just paints in the right place when it needs to paint it. It just does this, and it does it in the same frame. There's no need to manage the state, it just works. So in that situation, you we would pass the selected index over to the render object. So the render object just renders it always in the right place. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Uh, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. And yeah, this, this works just fine. Okay, and a couple more right. real quick. Let's see. So uh, Steph. Steph didn't come on the show to ask us this. Yeah. She could have right. done that. Instead, she 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 believed from back in the chat rooms asks why is shape decoration better? Um, I don't know when she asked that either. Okay. Probably when you're so in the middle of that. Better. I mean, be when I said better earlier, I was talking about the fact is it's better than having a rounded rectangle. Uh, sorry, a a border radius on a normal uh, a normal box decoration versus a staining border. So when you actually do want rounded borders, a lot of people. I'll show you here. So um, where's that selection? Uh, so what people what I've seen people do is they want this to look like a stadium board where it's rounded and they'll go okay my height I'll make the height of my selector uh, 48 uh, right uh, Oops. That was a size box 48 as soon as you start seeing fixed widths and heights on size boxes you're doing something wrong most of the time right yeah just FYI go watch my talk from FlutterCon there's a bit more in that in there anyway and then they'll go 24 here let me get rid of them let me make the size smaller right so um uh, maybe i'll do maybe let's make this double 48 and uh 96 is that right oh, that's about right uh what am i doing wrong that's probably right but my widgets don't center Wrap it in center. Oh, look. Um, now it's tall. So let's make this again. Let's make this. Uh, let's make 48 and 24 and just see how we go. I mean, all right. And then let's make the text slightly larger. Sorry, guys. Let's, let's see if I can make that taller as well. Make it bigger for everyone. Right. So as you've seen here, what I've done is I've now got these lovely rounded corners because. The radius is half the height, so it always continues around in a circle. But here's the problem. If someone changes their font size up to, like, I don't know, like they want to change their font size up, uh, let's get even bigger. I don't know. Let's just, just get stupidly big. I don't know. Like, Oops. that happens. Look at that. That's no good. Why do we want that? Oh, 
Oh. Okay. So we go, okay, let's not put our fixed size on there, right? Now it could be as big as it needs to be. Um, why on earth? <laughs> All the way to the top. Bad. Okay, so let me just, let me just, um, <laughs> no, I, I can talk to people about this actually. Um, so this is actually a common thing. So what I've done here is I've got the center. The center, what it does is push out to be consume all the space that I can. And so you get this happen because this wants to be as big as it needs to be in terms of height. But what you can actually do is do an unconstrained box. An unconstrained box sorts this out. And you say, I want it constrained in only one axis. In this case, I'm going to only constrain the horizontal. Now it passes an unconstrained height to the children. So center cannot feel the height because it doesn't know how big it is. So if I now run this, it will be as big as it needs to be. That's how you solve that. So wow. anyone else that has the problem, unconstrained box with a oh. with the constrained axis in one direction. All right. So anyway, now you see now it's lovely. Yeah. Now now our whenever our text size changes, our border changes the right size. It doesn't get clipped. However, now look, it's no longer round because yeah. I have to put a fixed height in the border. That's why that's crap, right? So. What we that's why I said about having a if we had a if we had a stadium border, its literal job is doing that. It looks at right at, when it paints it, it goes, okay, what's the height divided by two, make it rounded. So now we're guaranteed no matter what size the font is to have a nice stadium border and have this nice rounded border. So if I make the font half that height, it's still correct. And we haven't had yeah. to do any math or any calculations. And it actively changes and nicely shapes to the requirements for the user. Cool. All right. It would even uh, animate nicely too. It would animate if you want to. Okay, yeah, that's, that too. That too. Next Bonus. one. Bonus. Next one. Uh, next one. Uh, are the differences between border radius all yes. radius circular twelve and border radius circular twelve? Um, yes. So let's put this back to a rounded rectangle. Uh, no, not there. That's the wrong place. Here, yeah, rounded rectangle border, and we've got our border radius on. So if I do border radius dot circular twelve, that works just fine, doesn't it? No problem there. Um, if I make this, let's make this a constant color. Oh, that's nice. Now that's a constant color. My line. So I can make this constant, okay? But I can't make what's above it constant because this can't be made constant. And that's why I choose the other way. Circular calls a named constructor like this. And in doing so, this is not a constant constructor anymore. That's the bug that is in there, really. So in, if, if I now say, if I now say uh, all with a radius set to circular 12, it choose the same thing, but now look, I can now make my entire thing constant. So it's that's constable. 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 Uh, radius not circular with all is constable. There you go. Yes. <laughs> I love that word constable because it has two meanings. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's get rid of that one. Ahead. Let's get rid of that one. And let's look at this one. Uh, I found shape border provides an outer inner path, which is much better user experience when it comes on shadow and elevation. Yep. There you go. Yes. Oh, well, maybe that was right. just a comment. Okay. A comment. Great. Great. Well, that's, well, I think we got through everybody here. So, if you want to do um, custom, yeah, if you want to do custom borders, like you can actually make, um, like, uh, if you've got like a card and you've got like maybe a leading border and you want to space that out, you can do an outer border at the outside edge and an inner border at the inside and actually have like a custom border. So, so when we have the stadium border, you can literally just extend an uh, outline border or a shape border. And what this, uh, sorry, what the question says here, you can just provide a, um, it's, on the, it's on the bottom class here, hang on. There's a get inner and get outer border somewhere, if I can find it. The one time I went it, I can't find it. Yeah, get outer path, that's the one. And get inner path. And you can just override those functions and provide different paths. And, and you can have like a really nice, funny shaped borders and all sorts. Um, but also, like as I said, like proper bubbles. And, and Steph says, "Thank you for the clarification. Next time, uh, next stop for me is to create both code samples and have screenshots. So when someone asks me, I can show them." Thank cool. you, Steph. Thanking Simon. <laughs> um, right. 
do did we want to? I don't particularly. No, this is we're just at the three hour mark, so we yeah, could I think call it a day. Um, let's maybe, do let's do debugging next week. Let's really maybe let's, I might I might do a I might do another session uh, Saturday on uh, the Wow Shopping app for anyone that's okay. interested. Um, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel and you will be notified of, of and thumb it up, thumb this video up. Uh, yeah, thumb us up and 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 do all that jazz. And, and yeah, you'll tell be... your friends, tell your friends how much fun you're having right here now. Exactly. And yes, I like this here. Where's this uh, last comment? You look at this. See that live coexistence uh, really mean a lot. Let your friends know they yes, can come yes. here too. Really, tell no extra channel. Tell them to come subscribe. Go to the yes, live tab on YouTube. Yeah. Um, oh, and for those that want oh, the code that we just did, it's 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 in the chat on the gists and all that sort of jazz. Jazz. Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers it. Um, cool. Oh, I was coming. supposed to read something real quick. I was supposed oh, to read something real quick. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh. Uh, 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 what window oh. is it in? What window is it in? No, 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 no. Because it regards next week. Uh, yes, it and does. There is, it's in the. Uh, do you want to find it here? I'm, Almost there. I'm just about there. I'm scrolling. No, where where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, which is all the discussion about yesterday and today. And right. Here we go. Oh, so you found it? so uh, Brett Sutton is running a contest right now. He's the guy that puts together the One Pub uh, uh, publishing system, and he's also got a contest going on. And the winner for this Community Choice Award will be announced next week live here. Uh, so you can tune in. It'll just be a short little announcement, probably about an hour into the show or so. And there is a, a project will be awarded $500 based on who the community votes for. You can go to onepub.dev slash competition. And you might want to put that in the chat there, uh, or maybe I can cut and paste it. Uh, and each time you vote and leave a review, you will go into the draw for a $100 prize yourself. Ooh, that is good. So voting helps not only somebody gets selected, but also gives you a chance at possibly winning. Now let's go to find the right screen again. Come on, my systems here. You got it. Okay, great. Cool. So I just wanted to announce that, and uh, y'all can go check that out. And Brett will be on the show briefly next week for yeah. us to. Um, we might have some questions. other guests next week as well, some other special guests. Yeah. We'll see. Just uh, stay tuned. Lock knows? that screen on, you know, put your put your notices on and watch all that stuff. And, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, be, we'll be back. And thank all you right. Simon, again for your excellent yeah, work. And, and uh, I had fun again. So I'll be back too. So see yeah. you again next week. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.